defer because they're going to receive and then you'll get the kick. It means the and, same and, thing. And, well, it means the same thing except if Troy was allowed to choose to kick, then LSU would have received on both halves because they would have automatically picked the end on this half and they would have deferred and they would have taken the kick in the second half. So uh, that, <laughs> it's, it's a good thing. Had the official not corrected the Troy captain, LSU would have gotten both kicks. They corrected him, gave him the opportunity to defer rather than to actually select kicking. Uh, and so it's going to turn out uh, the way that it's supposed to, the way that the coach told him to. That's one of the so, football things. Eh? That's one of the football things. So <laughs> Troy's going to be kicking from the north to the south as we look down onto the field. Uh, LSU, because they're going to start on offense, I quickly give the LSU offense. Brandon LaFell at one wide out. Saron Black, Herman Johnson, Brett Helms, Lyle Hitt, and Joseph Barksdale, the interior line. Richard Dixon, the tight end. Demetrius Bird at the other wide out. And Terrence Tolliver, a third if there are three. Jared Lee, the starting quarterback. Jordan Jefferson will play a lot, we expect, or at least play some. And Charles Scott, the tailback. Quinn Johnson starting at fullback. Ball's teed up. It'll be ready to be kicked. And here to give the play-by-play, -play, the voice of the Tigers, Jim Hawthorne. Thanks, Doug. And the kickoff brought to you by Cintas, the uniform people, helping your business look and work better. Michael Taylor tees it up. He'll be kicking it from left to right as we look down on the Tiger Stadium. Holiday and Williams back deep to receive. And it is a bouncing kick that is going to be fall fallen on by a Tiger at about the 41-yard line. Don't know if he missed that or that's what he was trying to do, but he rolled it down there. Well, he hit him in the back. Is, is what happened. The LSU, as LSU turned when the ball was kicked, and I'm trying to see if I, I got a good look at the Tiger. Carnell Hatcher, I think, is the one. The ball hit him in the back, and he felt it hit, and of course, he then went to recover the ball because once it touches him, it's a free ball or once it goes 10 yards. And the Tigers have it at the 43, and the first quarter is uh, brought to you by your local Southern Quality Ford dealer. Receivers on both sides, an eye formation. Scott is the running back. Jared Lee under center, first play of the ball game. And he drops straight back to throw, and he does throw, and he throws it away on the far sidelines. It was in the direction of Bird, but it was well in front of him and went up into the uh, Troy bench, and it'll be second down and 10. Lee, 53%, 1,608 yards, 13 touchdowns, and four interceptions so far on the year, and um, that one wasn't close. Now the Tigers will send two receivers flanked out left. High formation, Charles Scott and Johnson at fullback. Lee goes under center, second and 10. And hands the ball off, and this is uh, Scott, and he doesn't get a thing, and it'll be third down and 10. Charles Scott had 156 rushes for 981 yards and 13 touchdowns, so the Tigers are over in their first two offensive plays of the game. As a matter of fact, he lost a yard at second down and 11. LSU 39% on third down attempts. Troy allows 38%. Two receivers left and one right. Tigers will line up in the shotgun with Scott and Lee back there. First offensive possession of the game, and LSU is looking at third and 11. Lee now waiting on the snap, and there it is. Straight back to throw. Steps up and does throw, and it is caught, I believe, but short of a first down at the 49, and the Tigers will have to punt it away. Brandon LaFell was in the slot on the left. Bird was split out wide left. LaFell in the slot ran a short out, uh, much too short for the first down, as a matter of fact. He picked up about three or four, maybe. Uh, LSU with uh, fourth and four ball at their own 49-yard line, a three and out here on the first offensive series. Alfrey will punt it. He's averaging 40.7 on 38 punts, and Cornelius Williams is back deep to receive for Troy, so the Tiger offense unable to move the ball the first time they have it. Alfrey uh, steps into it at about the 37. It's a high-hanging, wobbly kick, but there's a flag on the play before he got the, the, the play underway, and we'll see what what the infraction is. And they're stopping. It must be delayed for them to call it like that, or it's a legal, legal procedure. procedure. And so that will... An auspicious start, is it not? No, very much. Very much. And it was actually a pretty good punt. was going to be down. Prior to the snap, all start. Number 22 on the offense. That penalty is five yards. It's still fourth down. So the Tigers now will have to punt it on uh, fourth and ten. That's Ryan Baker, who is fourth a standout, standout on special teams, but uh, apparently moved prematurely from the spot that he occupies, which is a tackle or a guard on the punting formation. Now Dalfrey standing back around the 29. 
gets this one away, and it's a funny-looking thing. With the nose straight down, takes a good roll, though, inside the 15 and still going. Rolls down to about the 12 or 13-yard line, and uh, that's where they will put it in play. A 43-yard uh, punt with no return. Troy will start first and 10 at their 12-yard line. But the Tigers go three and out offensively to start the ball game. Let's see what the defense now can do, Doug, against this high-powered spread offense. At your neighborhood associated food stores, you'll find everything you need for your next tailgate party, so go ahead and sack them, Tigers, at your neighborhood associated food store. Four receiver pattern for the Trojans, and Brown, the quarterback, is the only one in the backfield. Two on both sides. First and ten for Troy at their 12. No score. We're just underway here in the uh, first quarter. First possession of the game for the Trojans. Direct snap. He looks to throw and does, and it is caught successfully up to the 20-yard line, an eight-yard gain on first down. That is uh, Jernigan, the wide receiver, who has the opportunity to wear LSU out tonight because he has done that to so many people this year. And this Brown, 69.2% pass completions, 1,227 yards, nine touchdowns, and he's thrown two interceptions. Second down and one, a gain of nine on the first play. Three receivers right and one left. Shotgun formation, and there's a long pass down the near sidelines, and it is overthrown at about the 45-yard line in the direction of Cornelius Williams. Tigers put a little pressure on Brown that time and maybe he had to unload it a little bit early. Jernigan, as we were talking about, 54 catches for 666 yards and five touchdowns. Troy, 32% uh, on third downs. LSU allows 32%, and it's third down in a yard. They got him spread out everywhere. Three receivers again right, two receivers left, a five-receiver pattern on third down and one, and Brown is back there by himself in the backfield. There is a snap. He wants to throw. Has plenty of time and does throw, and it's a first down at the 25-yard line, complete to Jernigan. Well, Jernigan with a, an end pattern, a square end pattern, very short, but all he needed for the first down was about three or four yards. He picked up five or six at the 25-yard line. Uh, again, out of that slot on the right, a quick pass, and these are no huddle plays. That's why you're hearing these plays from us being called fast. They get to the line of scrimmage, and then they'll call a play. Four receiver pattern. Now Harris uh, checks into the backfield with Brown. Out of the shotgun. There's the snap. He throws over the middle, and it is caught for another first down up at the uh, around the 35-36 uh, yard line. Uh, that one complete to Tate, and the tackle was made by Danny McRae. And the spread offense is doing exactly what it's supposed to do, and that is moving the ball downfield. This is the way that you're supposed to operate the spread offense. They do it much more efficiently than Auburn did, but this is that same offense we described to you in yep. the Auburn game, and sometimes it worked and really confused LSU. Two receivers left and one right. The play action fake, a pass across the way is incomplete. That one was poorly thrown in the direction of number four, Andrew Davis, on the far side of the field. And Peterson was over there kind of gumming up the play for LSU, and the incomplete pass brings up second down and ten for Troy from uh, their 37-yard line. Brown is at quarterback. He's back there by himself. Three receivers in a, in a wedge pattern over on the right side, two on the left side, five receiver pattern. Now they stand up, look to the far sidelines, and there is the play call. And Brown walks up to the line of scrimmage, barks out the play, and now he's back in the shotgun, and there's the snap. Tiger's coming after him, but he gets it away, and it is caught for a first down at midfield. Just that that quick, right on the money. The number 86, Cherry, he was hit immediately, but that is a first down. Troy started at their 12, and they have already moved it to their 49-yard line. Well, they're very efficient, aren't they, Jim? Yes, they they are. understand how to run this offense, and it works for them. Receivers on both sides, a four-receiver pattern. Brown in the shotgun with uh, Harris back there. There's the snap. He drops the throw, and he does throw, and it is incomplete. He overthrew. The intended receiver down around the 42-yard line, number 81, that's Terry. And it'll bring up second down and 10. LSU Athletics would like to thank tonight's game sponsor, Capital One Bank. Capital One Bank, the official bank of LSU Athletics. Seven passes, no runs. Troy has not run the ball, and as we said, they, they pass it to set up the run. Harris is back there in the shotgun now with Brown with the four-receiver pattern. And they're looking to the sidelines to get the play. Now they're ready to go out of the shotgun, and there's the snap. 
Short drop, throw across the way, man wide open, he's got it, and he's going to go down out of bounds at about the LSU 42-yard line, just about a yard or two short of a first down. The pass was complete again to Jernigan. That's three. Who already has caught three passes tonight against LSU. Three passes in less than four minutes here, right. and Jernigan will catch a lot of them. And is uh, very good. These are short passes, very safe. Uh, LSU is giving them a lot of room as they have to. Third down and one. Out. Here's a five-receiver pattern. And it looked like they were ready to go, but again, they stand up. Look over to the sidelines. Second time that they're looking at third and one, and there's nobody back there to run the ball. They're going to throw it. There's the snap. Brown will throw it, and it's caught easily for a first down at the LSU 38-yard line. That is the fourth first down in this drive. Tate, and very honestly, Doug, LSU has not slowed them down a bit. Well, the only time Troy, they've not had any success is when the pass was incomplete. Troy is spreading the field so wide, and when you spread the secondary that wide, you don't want to leave people out there on an island too much, so you, you're going to give more cushion, and that's all they're doing is throwing underneath the cushion. Well, that's, that's how other teams had so much success against LSU that ran this very same offense. Tigers put almost everybody at the line of scrimmage now, and it's that same pattern, a five-receiver pattern. Brown back to throw, has time, does throw. It's He threw behind the man who was open at the 30-yard line. I mean, the only reason that one wasn't complete for a big gainer was the ball was thrown a little bit over his uh, left shoulder. If that one had been on the money, that's another big completion. It was in the direction of Tate, and it's second down and 10. And that would have been the biggest completion of them all. It was an inside pattern from the inside slot receiver running a post pattern. He was open. The ball just a little behind him. They send a three flanked out to the right. That's to the near side. Now there's a flag on the play. And I, they may call illegal procedure against Troy here for some reason. They've been doing this the whole game. Let's listen. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 65 on the offense. Now, what's the difference? It's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. It'll still be second down. They, they've been doing that all night. They have. So and, and, I can't and, imagine what he did there. Yeah, and, I don't understand either. In fact, they, they did that um, uh, to LSU last week. There were a couple of penalties yeah. called. Uh, if you get in a down position, you can't move, but they're not in a down position. Second and 15. There's the snap, and here's the first run of the game, and there is a bunch of running room all the way down, and just about has a first down out of bounds on the far side down to the uh, LSU 30-yard line. Boy, the Tigers have just got caught flat-footed with that one. They, that's the first run of the game. It was Harris on the run, and he was finally run out of bounds by Peterson, and even after that uh, five-yard penalty, it is now third down and only two for Troy at the LSU 29-yard line. Harris, 131 carries, 654 yards and seven touchdowns. Four receiver pattern, two on both sides. Brown waiting um, on the snap. There it is. He drops. He looks. He throws. It is caught again. First down at the LSU 17-yard line, and the Tigers just simply are unable to stop this passing game. Right on the money to Davis. And that's that inside pattern. It's a short pattern, and the way that the ball is thrown by Brown, it's safe because Davis got inside position on the cover man. The ball was thrown in front of him. There's a quick snap. LSU defense was not ready, and there is a pass that is, should have been caught at the two-yard line, and it bounced off of the hands of the intended receiver. I think the tight end, uh, Travis Boyd, the LSU defense was not set. They were dancing around, looking around where they should be when the snap was made, and they had the man open, and he just didn't catch it, or that's a touchdown. Just dropped it. It should have been a touchdown, and he quick snapped LSU that time and caught him out of place. Three receivers on the right, two on the left. Brown back there by himself. Now this time again, they stand up and look towards the far sidelines. 9.59 to go in the first quarter. No score, but Troy is threatening. LSU went three and out to start the ball game. There's the snap. Brown drops the throw. Does throw. It's caught and then stopped immediately for no game. Or maybe he dropped it. It was Jones, I believe, who made the hit. From here, it looked like uh, it was in the receiver's hands. But, uh, but uh, he may have dropped it as we watch the replay. Well, that was the inside screen, and Jones hit him right yeah. when the ball got there and actually stripped the ball away so that it wouldn't have been a completion. And had it been a completion, it would have been a yard loss. That's right. So. They are three of three on third down attempts, and it is third and ten. Three receivers right, only one left this time. And the shotgun. Again, they straighten up. And timeout's going to be called, I believe, by Troy. Timeout called by Troy, 9.53 to go in the first quarter. The uh, 
Trojans are threatening. It is third and ten at the LSU 17-yard line. No score in the game on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Founded in 1935, the LSU Press is one of the oldest and largest university presses in the South and among the most outstanding publishers of scholarly books in the country. Books from LSU Press have earned many prestigious honors, including four Pulitzer Prizes, and it's the only university press to win in both fiction and poetry. LSU victories are everywhere you look. Bowl games following a college football season have been a tradition since 1902. This season, there will be 34 postseason bowl games showcasing the nation's most talented student athletes. This unique postseason experience has provided a lifetime of memories for generations of college football fans. Bowl games have established a remarkable heritage of not only supporting higher education, but also giving back to their local communities. Be a part of the college football experience by attending a bowl game this year. The first quarter is presented to you by your local Southern Quality Ford dealer. So far in the game, uh, Troy has run 14 plays, 13 passes. They have run at one time. Let's quickly go down to Jordy. Left the field quickly. A pretty severe gash on his right hand with a uh, cut. He is off getting that tended to. Shouldn't be anything bad, but it was a pretty deep cut. He should be back after this play. Let's hope that he will be. Third down and 10 at the LSU 17. Three receivers right and uh, two left. Five receiver pattern. Brown back there by himself. Troy started back at their 12 after LSU went three and out to start the ball game. All right, Brown waiting on the snap. And he, he stands up again, as does the rest of the team, and looks to the far sidelines. Play is signal in, and now they're ready to go. There's the snap. LSU is coming hard. There's the pass, and it is caught at the 10 and down to the 6-yard line. That is very close. It's first down. It's first and goal to go. On third down and 10, LSU could not get to him, and it was Jernigan again who was just wearing LSU out in this first series. LSU covered the receivers that time, but they got a matchup they wanted. Jernigan against Beckwith. That's all the quarterback is doing. He's looking to see who the matchup is. If LSU's playing man-to-man, -man, which guy does the linebacker have? If they're playing zone, he's going to throw it in front of the zone. All right, three receivers on the left, two on the right. This is the same basic formation that they have marched all the way down from their 12-yard line. And they've used up a lot of time. There's the snap. Brown looks in the end zone and throws it. It is caught, and that is touchdown. That was very, very simple and very, very easy. Got the matchup he wanted. Man-to-man -man coverage. I tell you, the, the, the Tigers just didn't even slow it down. And that was Danny McCray. That was Cherry who made the catch. Yeah, that was Danny McCray on the man-to-man -man coverage who has played very well uh, against Alabama, but he does not cover that well man-to-man -man against the quick receiver. And that's all Troy's doing. They run this offense extremely well, and they did it proficiently on that first drive for the score. Lisbon will try to attack on the extra point. That was an 88-yard drive. There is the snap and the kick, and the kick is good. And with 9-18 to go in the first quarter, LSU is going to have to play uphill. They trail Troy 7-0 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. The Southeastern Conference has established the most outstanding college football tradition in the country. The 12 member institutions have combined for an unprecedented 352 bowl appearances. Key to the success of SEC football is the support of the many loyal fans who have helped the conference lead the nation in total attendance for 26 consecutive years. The SEC salutes the more than six and a half million fans who will attend a game at an SEC stadium this year. LSU is at a pivotal moment in history. The flagship agenda is the blueprint for moving LSU to greater prominence as one of the top public universities in the nation. To reach these goals, LSU needs strong financial resources. The Forever LSU campaign is raising support on an unprecedented level between now and 2010. Public funds make LSU a good university. Private funds will make it a great university. To find out more, visit foreverlsu.org. The first quarter is presented to you by your local Southern Quality Ford dealer. 
Well, that was, uh, that was pretty impressive by this Troy offense, and uh, we told you about it in our pregame show as best we possibly could that this is what they were going to do. This is, this is what they do. They drove it 88 yards in 16 plays, 15 passes. They used three minutes and 49 seconds off the clock. Cherry, a seven-yard touchdown catch, his very first of the year. And they were four of four on third down conversions. LSU had them on, in third and ten at least twice, and they converted it. Tiger defense really, really struggled on that offensive series by Troy. The offense went three and out, and so LSU has got to push the button and get started in this game. They haven't started yet. And Holiday and Williams back deep to receive. And Brown's a very, very accurate passer, and they scored that touchdown on an 87-yard drive considering they dropped a couple of balls, and he threw one behind behind one of the receivers, so the drive yep. was very impressive. All right, here's the kick, and that's another one of those short driving squirmy kicks. Picked up and dropped and kicked out of bounds. My goodness. LSU could not field the punt, but one of the Tigers was lucky enough to kick it out of bounds. Quinn Johnson uh, tried to pick it up, and he couldn't do it, but it went out of bounds at about the 39-yard line. That was Johnson as we watch it on the replay, and he just flat could not pick it up. And somebody coming up to try to help kick it. And uh, I, I believe um, that was number 60 for LSU. That would be Will Blackwell. So that was fortunate that LSU didn't hand it right back. Now the Tigers need to get going. Need to get going. Two receivers left and one right. Pistol formation, Jared Lee is the quarterback. Charles Scott, the running back. LSU went three and out their first offensive series. There's a snap. He looks to throw, and he does. It is caught by LaFell, and LaFell uh, gets uh, a few yards up to around the uh, 44, they say. Gain of five on the play before he's knocked out of bounds by Calvin. And it'll be second down and five, and that's okay. You get five on first down, and, and that's that's a good start. That's a quick screen to the outside. LaFell in the slot, and Demetrius Bird left his feet in trying to make the block and thereby allowed the cornerback to come up and tackle LaFell. He still picked up a little more than five, but... The game should have been for much more than that. Two receivers, right eye formation, Lee under center. With the ball, runs the option play. And look at this, Jared Lee will keep it himself. And he goes down at about the 48-yard line, about two yards or a yard short of the first down, brought down by Sheffield, the defensive end. Something we have not seen very often this year. Lee keeping the ball and running it himself on the option play. And you're probably not going to see a whole lot of it. Because I wouldn't think so. Man. Troy's going to defend that by making him keep it and having linebackers from the inside take shots at him as he turns upfield. I don't think the coaches want him to keep it very much. Third down and one. Lone receiver, LaFell, flanking out to the near side. I formation in the backfield. Lee will go under center. There's a snap. Hand off to Scott. Scott puts his head down. He's got running room down inside the 40. And he plows down to the Troy 37-yard line for the first down and a whole lot more. The free safety, Martin, came up to make the hit. 14 yards on the run by Charles Scott. LSU bunched up on their alignment. And everybody, they had eight people on the line of scrimmage. So you knew they weren't going to pass because you're, you're not going to make somebody ineligible if you have a pass play call. That was kind of a tip-off. A good uh, off-play tackle to the 37-yard line of Troy. Shotgun formation, two receivers right and one left. Lee drops to throw, looks to throw, and threw it uh, over the LSU bench. Troy with a big rush, and they do. They're very aggressive, Jim. They blitz a lot. They've got good linebackers, good defensive ends, and they bring a lot of pressure because they're not very big defensively in the middle, but they do a lot of things and are very active up there to try to make you make quick decisions. Well, I think Lee was looking the entire time that he got the ball at Charles Scott, who was coming over to the near side of the field, and uh, he just wisely, I guess, threw it up uh, in almost over the LSU bench on the near sideline, second and ten. I formation, lone receiver. Here's a handoff, and it's Scott uh, up the middle, and he doesn't get a thing. And so it'll be third down and ten. That's kind of the same formation as the play that Scott gained all the yardage on just now. LaFell lined up on the line of scrimmage as a flanker, although he covered up the tight end in doing so. You 
you know that he's not going to pass the ball out of that formation. And uh, Troy apparently figured out that they're not going to pass the ball. We're going to go ahead and come up, and we'll stop the run. They held it to about a yard gain. Yeah, actually, they do say he got a yard, so it's third down and nine for the Tigers. At the Troy 35, LSU trails 7 to nothing. 7-10 to go in the first quarter. Three receivers right and one left. Shotgun formation. Lee. The lay handoff to Scott. And Scott is not going to get anywhere close. Just got it to the 35, and that's it. And that's just about back to the line of scrimmage. It's going to be fourth down and about eight. Looked like he had a play when he got the handoff on the draw play, but uh, the, the middle linebacker came over to follow up on the play to clean it up, but the entire defensive front and the safeties came up to make the tackle and held him just about another yard gain. Cole David is going to have to try a 52-yard field goal. My goodness. He is kicking with the wind, though, so let's see. Is the LSU offense stalled? There's the snap and the kick. He has hit it well. If he's hit it straight, then it is good. Colt Davids salvages three for LSU. Uh, that is a beautiful 52-yard field goal by the leading scorer in LSU history. And so, with 6.16 to play in the first quarter, it is now Troy 7, LSU 3 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. We are men. We do not make a doctor's appointment when we get hurt. No, our wives have to call Oxner for us. No doctors say things like, this could have been prevented and don't eat so many fried things. Dignity and a small copay are nothing when compared to peace between the warrior and his ride home. Call 1-866-OXNER to schedule your husband's appointment today. Oxner, health care with peace of mind. Get the good stuff. Hey folks, Hokey Gosh on here for Napa Auto Parts. Napa wants you to get the most out of every gallon of gas you put in your vehicle. So remember to keep those tires properly inflated, replace clogged air filters, change your oil regularly, and keep those fuel injectors clean. Napa has plenty of other gas saving tips for you, and with locations throughout Louisiana, you're never far from a Napa store. It's a Napa, a proud sponsor of the LSU Sports Radio Network. First quarter is presented to you by your local Southern Quality Ford dealer. The scoring drive, your world delivered. Uh, LSU went 27 yards in seven plays. They used 255. He got a 52-yard career-long field goal from Cole David to make it 7-3. Uh, to three. Troy leading. Um, and each time the Tigers kick a field goal or extra point, Allstate will donate to the university's general scholarship fund. Allstate, you're in good hands. Well, Troy is about to receive the ball again. The last time they had it, they marched at 88 yards and 16 plays. So let's see if the Tigers' defense can do something about that this time. Jasper will kick it away. And Calvin is uh, back deep to receive along with Greer. Calvin and Greer back deep to receive for the Trojans kicking from right to left. And there is the kick. It is high and coming down very short. Taken at the 12, back to the 15, to the 20. And breaking it across the 30, up to the 33-yard uh, line on the return before being uh, hit by uh, Ron Brooks. It's number 27, Greer. And now let's see what the Tiger defense can do against this high-powered Troy offense. This broadcast is brought to you by our Southern Quality Ford dealers, where you'll find the all-new 2009 Ford Flex featuring an optional refrigerated console. Room for seven, up to 24 miles per gallon. Go ahead, judge it on style points when you test drive Flex at your local Southern Quality Ford dealer. Brown is the quarterback. Harris is back there with him in the shotgun. Four receiver pattern, two on both sides. There's the snap. Stops, plenty of time to throw. He does throw, and it's complete. Up to the 40-yard line, and again, it's it's complete to Burton, and the tackle was made by Peterson. And again, Doug, LSU is just letting them throw in front of them. They're just letting them catch the ball in front of them, but Troy will do that all night long, as, uh, as they showed they would do the last time. Burton coming into the game, 37 catches for 37 yards, and he got nine on that one. LSU just simply not putting any pressure. They're not even getting close at this point to Brown. Four receiver pattern, two on both sides. Harris, Brown standing back there. There's a snap. 
Here's the throw. Look at this guy. He is wide open and is hit and out of bounds at the LSU 48-yard line. First down, that was uh, complete to Davis, knocked out of bounds by LSU's Harry Coleman. And, Jim, look at the matchup that they're getting. The wide receiver who caught that pass coming out of the slot now, and he's covered, Andrew Davis, covered by Harry Coleman, a safety, who is not particularly good in coverage. That's the mismatches that they're going to get, and that's exactly what the quarterback is looking for. So how do you stop that? Four receiver pattern. There's a snap and a handoff, and running through and over and under LSU defenders down to the 39-yard line goes Harris on his second carry of the night, and he got about 10 on the carry. LSU's defense, it looks like, Doug, is, is so, and they are, so geared to throwing the ball that they're just not looking for somebody to run it. Yeah, to answer your question, if you insist on covering certain of their receivers with certain of your defenders, you can't stop it if their receivers are faster than your defender as long as the quarterback gets the ball to it. Well, they're already back that's, down to the LSU 39-yard line. That's they, why this offense gives inferior teams but that have special talents, gives them a chance to compete with better teams. Well, they're certainly doing that tonight. And in motion, sets up in the backfield, and now here's Brown, and he throws, and it's batted down by Chad Jones on the safety blitz. That was the biggest defensive play of the game for LSU right there as Jones came very hard, and he almost got to Brown, and um, he threw the ball just as uh, right into Jones, as a matter of fact. Nice high leap there, and a very fine defensive play in its second and ten. Yeah, and, Jim, the defense will learn as the game goes along. The players will learn, and they'll start to, to disrupt some of those routes, I mean, it will improve. It'll get better. So it's not going to stay like this all the way, but it, it is a challenge for LSU to, to stop this offense. Four receiver pattern, shotgun formation. Brown again steps up in the pocket, and again he fires it incomplete. This time down around the 20. Well covered down around the 20-yard line was Cherry, who caught the touchdown pass. And here's third and 10 again. And uh, they have converted this this. Like four third downs, and at least two of those, I, 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 I want to remember, say, was third and ten. And it's third and ten again at the LSU 38. And that's Phelan Jones who was in on the coverage and did a very nice job uh, on the coverage on that play. Disrupted it. He, he was so close to the receiver, the pass couldn't be completed. That's why it was an incomplete pass. Five receiver pattern, three on the left, two on the right. Their basic pattern. There's Brown back there by himself. This time he rolls left to throw, and he does throw, and it is caught. And that is, he is down at the three-yard line. It'll be first and goal to go, and that's the third time tonight, at least the third time tonight. That's a 35-yard play on third down and 10 that Troy just did there. And Troy learned on the previous play, the receiver covered this time by Phelan Jones. Jones on the previous play had inside position, and the receiver started the pattern the same way. Inside and ran to the corner. Jones bit on the inside as he did the previous play. LSU didn't have very many defenders out there when the play was snapped, as a matter of fact, but the, there's a handoff and a run. It goes down at about the four-yard line and a flag on the play. LSU didn't have their defense out there. Well, they, they had... They were, didn't know who to put in. They had two guys who were coming off the field. They did not make it all the way off the field. Had too many people on. The flag's thrown. That's going to be against the LSU Tigers. But had, well, it has to be. They just didn't, they had, didn't have the right defenders in there. And it's going to make it uh, first and goal to go. And move the ball half the distance down to the one-yard line. Substitution is right here on the big bench. Half of this is in the goal. First down. They had the right defenders, just too many of them. They had 13 out there. Well, because <laughs> the two coming off were not across the sideline. Now, one of, the, one of those officials was just looking over here at the sideline. He was not looking at the play. He wanted to see if they got off the field in time, and they didn't. First and goal to go for Troy at the L two-yard line they already lead seven to three 412 to go in the first quarter LSU's defense has not been able to slow the Troy offense in their two offensive possessions shotgun formation man in motion going to the hand 
handoff to the man in motion, and he scores easily. That was Burton, I believe. And it is 13 to 3. Wow. Well, they've made it look easy twice, haven't they? Well, they sure have. And um, these are not big chunks. They got one big chunk on the corner route. Uh, after having set up Phelan Jones on the previous play, he made a good defensive play, and they used his good defensive play against him on the follow-up play, and that's the sign of a good offense. They'll use your success against you, and that destroys confidence in the secondary players. Bluesman will try to tack on the extra point. And it is up, and it is good. And with four minutes to go in the first quarter, Troy has a stunt. This crowd here in Tiger Stadium, and I think stunned the LSU football team as they lead it 14 to 3 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. I'm Feature. And I'm Benefit. And we're here to tell you about the new Ford Flexus Style Point number 43. Easy fuel, capless fueling. Which, since there's no gas cap, I Honestly, Benefit, the name of the feature is self-descriptive. Looks like you're not needed here. <laughs> so you're not going to mention Style Point number 68? The EPA-estimated 24 MPG highway? No. Because, you know, people really like saving money on gas. Why does it always come back to you? Test drive the all-new 2009 Ford Flex at your local Southern Quality Ford dealer. You guys ready for the game? All right. Well, management told me they weren't paying me for pep talk, so I'm going to stop now. You know that place between saving money and sacrificing quality? We are so there. What's the point of saving money if you get lousy results? Especially when it comes to car insurance. State Farm can give you the right amount of coverage, plus discounts up to 40%. You'll like how much you can save. State Farm. The first quarter is presented to you by your local Southern Quality Ford dealer. Four minutes to go in the first quarter. Troy leads LSU 14-3. They have moved the ball at will. Here is the kickoff. And it's an onside attempt. And they are piling up around the 45. And I don't know who got it. I mean, Troy is coming at LSU. with uh, LSU recovered it. But the Tigers are going to get it at the 46-yard line. They're coming at LSU with both feet. Uh, I mean, uh, Jim, I, it's the same. They're kicking at Cornell Hatcher and hit him right again. At him. Right at him. Yeah, it looked like it, from up here, you, you couldn't quite see that it hit him. It looked like maybe it was just an onside attempt. But now here comes uh, Jordan Jefferson into the ball game, And let's see if he can spark this LSU offense. And, boy, do they ever need a spark. First and 10 LSU at their 46-yard line. Keelan Williams is the running back two receivers left and one right and jefferson hands it off to williams and he's going to be thrown for a loss all the way back at the 42 yard line and i tell you troy is enthusiastic they are excited they realize at this point doug that they have a good chance to win this ball game well they've outplayed lsu clearly but they're operating their offense very very methodically lsu is not able to disrupt it but the thing that is most surprising is that defensively, Troy has come to play. They're gang tackling. They're getting to the ball. They're getting on the ball carrier. That time they threw Williams for a two-yard loss. Second down and 12. Shotgun formation. Three receivers left and one right. Jefferson is going to throw, and he does complete to LaFell. 45. He's down the near sidelines and out of bounds after only a short gain, though, at the 49-yard line. So they're still going to be looking at the third down and long yardage. That is Jefferson's first completion as a Tiger quarterback. Williams, the strong safety, came up and made the stop. That drive, incidentally, was a seven-play, 67-yard drive for Troy, and they only used 2.11 on the clock, and they lead it 14-3, to and LSU is looking at third down and six. And this is the first big play of Jefferson's career, a third down and about six or seven to go right at midfield. Two receivers left and one right. Shotgun formation. Williams is back there with Jefferson. Waiting on the snap, and there it is. He drops the throw, and he does, and he throws it where there was nobody anywhere near it. It hit the ground around the 40-yard line. Maybe it was supposed to be for Dixon, but it wasn't anywhere close. And so LSU goes three and out again. Now, that was clearly a miscommunication. There was nobody there. Demetrius Bird had gone downfield. It looked like Jefferson thought that he was going to run either a stop or an out pattern. Uh, Dixon was coming from the inside, but he was not anywhere near the spot where the pass was thrown. Ball so. just hit the ground at the 40-yard line with nobody near it. Back deep is Williams to receive for Troy. And... Uh, Brady Dalfrey will punt it from the LSU 35. 
It has been all Troy in the first quarter. High hanging kick, fair catch is called for and taken in at the 18 yard line by Williams and that's where Troy will start this series. A 31 yard kick and no return. Listen to Les Miles talk about the upcoming game on the Les Miles Show presented by Capital One Bank from 7 to 8 each Wednesday live at Walk-On's Bistro and Bar. Check your local, local listing for the other sports radio affiliate in your area. And Chevy is the official vehicle of the LSU football team. Chevy and American Revolution. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there in Monsanto. Yield Guard VT Triple. Maximize your hybrid's full genetic potential. Three receivers left and one right. Brown, the quarterback. He has been eating LSU alive. There's the snap. He has plenty of time to throw, and he does throw, and it is caught at the 25, up to the 30, up to the 35, up to the 36-yard line. That'll be another first down. Complete to Burton. Burton just ran a stop pattern. Now, this is out of the slot on the left. They've got LSU spread out all over the field, but a badly missed tackle that time by Jai Eugene, who came up, tried to tackle him, didn't wrap him up. That gave the pass receiver the freedom to get downfield for a big game first at the 36-yard line. Five receiver pattern. LSU has just one first down in the game. Troy has rolled up 10 in the first quarter. Brown is in the backfield by himself. Their basic pattern, three receivers right, two left. Now man goes up and sets up in the backfield, and uh, he is handed the ball. This time, no go. This is uh, Harris, and he runs into Char uh, Ricky Jean-Francois for no gain on the play. Fans, don't forget our very own Mike the Tiger is up for Capital One Mascot of the Year, but he needs your help. Mike is squaring off against a different furry opponent each week, and your vote decides who wins. So log on to CapitalOneBowl.com daily and vote for Mike the Tiger. Brown, 13 of 21 for 151 yards thus far in the ball game. In the shotgun. Now they, they raise up and look for the uh, play to be signaled in from the far sideline. Clock is running, 1.30 to play in the first quarter, 14 to 3. Troy stunning LSU. There's the snap. Brown rolls to the near side being chased. He throws the ball. It is caught. At the 40-yard line, tackled immediately. Cornelius Williams made the, the catch, and he was hit immediately by Danny McRae. Short gain on the play. It'll be third down and six. But LSU has not stopped Troy on a single third down conversion attempt tonight. They are five of five. Three receivers left and two right. Brown back there by himself. Looks to the far sidelines to get the play. 49 seconds and ticking in the first quarter. Now waiting on the snap. There it is, and LSU sending everybody. There's the pass, and it's batted down up around the 48-yard uh, line in LSU territory <coughs> in the direction of Jernigan. Batted away by Chad Jones, and that time LSU had everybody coming, and they finally forced Brown to have to throw it early, incomplete, and this will be the first punt of the night for Troy. Brown got the matchup that he wanted. He threw the inside pass to Jernigan, covered by Harry Coleman. Jernigan was open enough to make the reception. Actually, the ball hit him on the hand so quickly, he didn't expect it to be there that quickly. So Troy, for the first time, will be in punt formation. There uh, seems to be a little, uh, little concern on the field about something. We'll have to wait and see what that is. Goggins is uh, into punt. And uh, Trendon Holiday back to receive for LSU. Goggins averaging 38 and a half on 37 punts. 38 seconds left in the uh, first quarter. 14 to 3, Troy leads LSU. There's a snap. And that's one of those running kicks. And Holiday is going to let it roll and pick it up. And he fumbled it. And fumbled. I think Troy got it. Nope, he got it back. Well, that was just a mistake by Holiday. It was uh, one of those running, the, the punter runs to the near sidelines and kicks it on the run. And it's a wobbly, tumbling thing. And Holiday tried to pick it up. And he, he was very, very lucky. Uh, to be able to recover it after he had touched it at the 11-yard line. And that's where LSU will start here. The Tigers badly need to have some offensive uh, success here. That's one of those rugby kicks, and a lot of teams use it effectively. That time, Troy certainly did. Trendon Holiday with a big mistake trying to field a ball that was bouncing erratically right up to him and fortunately recovered at the 11-yard line, first down Tiger. Jared Lee back in at quarterback, two receivers left on the nine formation. Lee waiting on the snap, and there it is. 
And he hands it off to Scott, and Scott is going to be stopped for no gain. As a matter of fact, he lost a yard. May have lost two yards back at the 10. Where is this Troy defense coming from? They were not a heralded defense coming into this game. They have just stopped LSU's offense cold. Well, they're pretty good. Uh, but one thing is they are quick. They're not that big, and LSU's running a lot of slow-developing plays which gives a quick defense time to react and recover. Uh, LSU has not run the at Troy except one time in this game, which was a big gainer for Charles Scott uh, on one of the earlier drives. LSU is a flag for another illegal substitution. I, I, I don't know what the illegal substitution was. They had but too many people in the huddle. Well, they, they had 12 in the huddle. They broke the huddle with 12 people. And uh, the clock shows all zeros, but they'll put two seconds back up on the clock. So LSU is just really having their problems here tonight. They, they have not been able to move the ball offensively. They have not been able to stop Troy except for one time. And they have had two substitution penalties already in the game. One on defense and one on offense. And now it is second down and 16 at the LSU five-yard line with two seconds left in the third quarter. They'll run the clock, and now it'll tick down to nothing, and now that is the end of the first quarter. So let's see if uh, there are better things ahead for LSU as we go to the second quarter. With the score, Troy 14, LSU 3 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Stay cool and look cool this year with Kenwood Springs. Sign up for one year of bottled water delivery with Kenwood Springs and you'll receive one free pair of LSU Tiger Crocs. Log on to KenwoodSprings.com slash LSU to learn more. And before you sign up for Kenwood Springs delivery, register to win one pair of season tickets for the 2009 LSU football season. That's free Crocs when you sign up for delivery and a chance to win LSU football season tickets when you log on to KenwoodSprings.com slash LSU. No purchase necessary to qualify for ticket giveaway. Away. Wouldn't it be nice to get rewarded just for doing what you normally do anyway? Well, that's what happens when you sign up for free checking with rewards from Capital One Bank. It's a free checking account that rewards you for everyday banking. Just swipe your debit card, write a check, or pay bills online and earn rewards like cash, travel, or merchandise. New Capital One Rewards Checking. Visit your local branch or CapitalOneBank.com slash rewards for terms and conditions. What's in your wallet? $50 minimum opening deposit required. Bank rules and regulations apply. Limit one consumer rewards checking account per customer. Branch products and services offered by Capital One and a member of KC. Imagine a world without Cintosh uniforms. The service call. Morning, ma'am. What do you want? Never Please mind, Dad. I don't want it. I'm so tired of door-to-door -door salespeople as if no, I have no. nothing better to do than stand here and buy your vacuum cleaners or your magazines. No, thank you. Uh, lady, does this mean you don't want me to fix your septic tank? Put your stamp in Cintas uniforms and your business will get instant identity. Cintas can handle any uniform need for any business. Call 1-800-CINTAS-1 or visit Cintas.com today. Cintas, the uniform people. 14 to 3, Troy leads LSU. The Tigers have it second and 16 at their own five. Had a great burger lately. Times Grill, the presenting sponsor of Mike's Kids Club, is your home for world famous hamburgers rated Louisiana's best with locations in Baton Rouge, Mandeville, and Slidell. Times Grill is the place for all Tiger faithful to enjoy great food, cold beverages, live music, and big screen LSU sports broadcasts. Go Tigers. Here is the AT&T Real Yellow Pages trivia of the game. We'll give that to you in just a second. We're ready to go now for the second quarter brought to you by Burger King. Shotgun formation, four receiver pattern. Lee in the end zone throws. Batted and it's down. Batted down at the line of scrimmage, and it'll be third down and 16. In how many seasons has LSU held the number one ranking in either the coaches' poll or the AP poll? Send your responses to trivia, trivia at lsu.edu, and a lucky winner will receive a prize pack from AT&T Real Yellow Pages and yellowpages.com, your world delivered. It gives you some astounding stats here in the first quarter in a just a moment. And this is a really critical play. Third and 16 from your five-yard five line. Yard line yeah. Third down and long yardage is not been Jared Lee's best place. Receivers on both sides, high formation. Lee's going to hand it off, and uh, this is Scott, I believe it is. Uh, he's only up to the 15-yard line and pulled down by Gale, so LSU will have fourth down and will have to punt it away. Listen to these stats. In the first quarter, Troy had 10 first downs. LSU had one. 
total offense in the first quarter. Troy, 179 yards. LSU, 36. Lee is 2 for 4 for 11 yards. Brown, 14 of 23 already for 155 yards and a touchdown. He's completed passes to seven different receivers. Calvin is back deep, standing at the Troy 45-yard line. Dalfrey's going to have to punt it from the goal line. There's a snap, and he hits it. He kicks it into the wind, and it is a fair catch caught at the 42-yard uh, line. And that's where Troy will put it in play after a 43-yard kick with no return. I tell you, Troy has started at their 12 and scored. Then they, they started uh, deep in their own territory again and scored. This is almost like a gimme to them right here. We'll take the timeout, 14.09 to go in the first half. 14-3, Troy leads LSU on the LSU Sports Radio Network. SECsports.com is the official website of the Southeastern Conference. This interactive site features video highlights, real-time coverage of SEC championships, and up-to-the-minute stats and standings. Be sure to listen to exclusive online coverage of weekly coaches' media briefings or register for tickets to an upcoming SEC championship. Fans can also check out the online superstore. So take a minute and experience the Southeastern Conference online. It's all at SECsports.com. Many universities claim to have exciting school spirit, while others say they offer great academics. Some universities say they attract students from around the world and claim to have top scholars. A few universities have rich culture and unique beauty. But there is one university that has all this and more. Louisiana State University. LSU is the one. The second quarter, as always, is presented to you by Burger King. 14 to go in the first half, 14 to 3. Troy leads it. They have it first 10 at the 42-yard line. The new Mushroom and Swiss Steakhouse Burger from Burger King is the ultimate comfort burger. If your day's looking down, you can always turn to the Mushroom and Swiss Steakhouse Burger made with 100% Angus beef, smothered in melted Swiss cheese, and piled high with mushrooms. For a limited time only, participation may vary. Brown and Harris in the backfield. They set up in a pistol formation for the first time. And he hands the ball off to Harris. And Harris right up the middle is all the way up to midfield. A two yards short of the first down. Right up the LSU defensive middle. I mean, just blew past the line of scrimmage. <coughs> and it'll be second down and only about two yards. That's the LSU formation. And Troy runs a trap right up the middle. Just It's like a dive play out of the shotgun. The pistol formation with the running back lined up directly behind the tailback, who is the quarterback, and it was a big gainer, about eight yards. Troy uh, beginning to feel like they can do offensively just about anything they want to. Out of the pistol again, there's the snap. Brown looks to throw, and he does, and it is incomplete at the 45. That one should have been called. It was right at Perry, the wide receiver, and skipped off of his hands, and will bring up third down and about two. LSU Athletics would like to thank tonight's game sponsor, Capital One Bank. Capital One Bank, the official bank of LSU Athletics. I think LSU should have had enough of this let's reach out to the opposition bit. You know, it's time to start playing hard. There's a snap and a handoff to Harris, and Harris has got the first down and a whole lot more. Down to the LSU 39-yard line. First and 10, Troy. Goodness gracious. Well, Jim, they know, have not been, they've only been stopped one time on a third down attempt. But there is a flag on the play, and let's see if they bring it back. There is no penalty. There is no penalty. Formation. There were seven men on the line of scrimmage. The result of that play is the first down. So it is a first down at the uh, LSU, just inside the LSU 40-yard line, and Troy continues to just rack up incredible yardage. Three receivers right, two receivers left. Brown is back there by himself. Every time he stands up, one or two of the LSU linemen jump because sometimes they snap the ball. They've got LSU really guessing. There's Brown back to throw. He does near side, and it is incomplete. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Burton. Popped up in the air, and it was up for grabs, but LSU couldn't get anybody over by the ball, and it'll be second down and 10. Well, that was that inside screen dropped by Burton. 
Now, Troy has dropped several passes, sure and the Brown has missed a couple of receivers. Still, they're absolutely controlling this game. If they ever get real hot, it's going to be tough for LSU. LSU's got to turn it up a notch. Four receiver pattern out of the shotgun. Harris is back there with Brown. There's the snap. He drops the throw and has plenty of time. Now he's boxed in and throws, and it is caught, though, by Jernigan, and he's got a first down at the, I beg your pardon, by Burton at the 30-yard line. And I don't think it was intended to Burton. The ball got batted along the way, popped up in the air. Burton was crossing the field left to right, and he just happened to be there when the ball came down. He is They're not the say guy. They're going to say just about a half yard short, and Troy is going to go quickly on third down and less than a yard. Three receivers left and one right. There's the snap, and the handoff to Harris, and Harris gets the first down. Let's go down to Jordy. Uh, I, I can tell you it is absolutely lifeless down here. I, I've never seen anything quite like this. Uh, no zip, no enthusiasm. Boy, we better, we better crank it up in a hurry. Can you imagine if they get a touchdown here and go up 21-3? Can you imagine what we're about to hear? Yeah. Yep, I can. Three receivers left and one right. First and ten at the LSU 27. Brown with the ball, looks to throw and does, and it is caught, and downed immediately at the 24-yard line. Pass was complete to Markham. Again, the LSU defenders are behind the receivers. They're, they're just moving the ball at will. Six yards on that play, second down and four. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Brown and Harris back there on second down and four at the LSU 21. There's the snap. And off to Harris, breaks the tackle. 20, 15, 10, out of bounds, and a flag goes down. He's out of bounds actually at the 11-yard line. That's going to be a first down for Troy, and they are knocking on the door again. But let's see what the flag is all about. Yeah, let's see what that is. That's downfield. Got to holding. be some sort of a... It's a go. holding against uh, Troy, and I believe that's their first penalty of the night. Second. Well, it was downfield blocking on Jai Eugene, and uh, actually... Eugene was being held, and he also had the other holding. guy's face mask. Number 83 on the offense. That penalty is 10 yards from the end of the run. Replay second down. So you get the, you so get the yardage it. on the run. Yeah, and it moves it back, and it's going to bring up second down and two now. Right. So they get they get the yardage minus the penalty yardage. Well, it would have been first and goal. Yeah, it would have been uh, first and goal. Now it's first, it's second and two, just behind the LSU 20. And I, it's just amazing to watch Troy moving the ball against this LSU defense. Two receivers on both sides. And Brown drops. Here's the safety blitz. The throw is complete over the middle. And it's a first down at the 17-yard line, complete to Jernigan. Now, that's just good quarterback. And LSU, with a full-scale blitz, they had two defenders remaining in the secondary. They rushed everybody else. And the quarterback, Brown, knew who the hot receiver was. It was Jernigan, laid the ball out in front of him. Jernigan made the catch. There was nobody in the secondary except Chad Jones, who was chasing him, and one other defender chasing the other receiver. Just outplayed. Brown did a great job getting rid of the football to the right receiver. Three receivers left and one right out of the shotgun. Brown back to throw. Has plenty of time. He throws towards the end zone, and he had a man wide open, and he just overthrew him in the near side of the end zone. That was Jernigan, and he had the Tiger defender just completely soundly beaten, and the pass was just a little bit overthrown. Let's Brandon see Taylor, was. who was covering Brandon him, Taylor. And he got behind Taylor. He had a yard and a half or so on him. The pass thrown a little high. So it's going to be second down and 10, but a uh, well-designed pattern. Yep. The receiver beat the defender. The pass just a little over front. Three receivers left and one right. Round to throw again. It's caught uh, at the 10-yard line, and uh, down at about the 11 will bring up third down. Jim, I'll tell you something that's very noticeable, though, and it goes along with what Jordy said and what we have witnessed. On the inside patterns, in, and Troy doesn't run inside patterns a majority of the time. They're getting people out in the flat. But on an inside pattern, there are a lot of defenders there. LSU's not teeing off on them. They're just pulling them down. They're not hitting them. Third down and four. Three receivers left and one right. Out of the shotgun. Oh, my goodness. I think LSU, and they are. They were very obviously badly offsides. I think that was Raheem Alim. That's going to give them a first down. Yeah, Tigers came up to blitz. Uh, but some of the blitzers. Although, into the let's see zone. if um, 
if uh, the offense pulled them off. Well, they're, they're, the both, offense, they're both pointing. Yeah, the offense reacted to LSU stepping into the neutral zone. That's a, that's what it looked like here, against yeah. LSU. That's certainly what it looks like. Yep. Yeah, First and Prior to the snap, offside. On the defense. That's going to be... Well, it's first and goal to go now. After the penalty is the first down. First and goal at uh, just behind the five-yard line as um, Troy is on the verge of putting 21 on the board. They lead LSU already 14 to three as the Tigers' offense is not really even threatened tonight, and the defense can't stop them. Brown back there by them by himself. Has the snap, plenty of time to throw, and he is running near side, and he throws the ball out of bounds in the near side of the end zone just as he was going down. Boy, that was a great, great effort by a quarterback who is a very good quarterback. And he almost I mean, he got knows a, what he's doing. Almost got a touchdown out he of sure it, too. Did. As he, he was being to the pulled right. down by Nevis. Yeah, looked to the right. His receiver was covered, looked in the middle. He was covered, rolled left. Cornelius Williams was in the end zone, and as Brown started to go down, he flicked the ball out there. Williams caught it on the short hop in the end zone. Second and goal from the five. Five receiver pattern. Brown back there by himself. Same uh, formation that Troy State has run all night against LSU and run very successfully. There's the snap. Brown to throw. He does. And it is incomplete at the six-yard line in the direction of Burton, and it'll bring up third down. Tiger fans, grab your mobile phone because it's now time to text to win, presented by Verizon Wireless. For your chance to win an autograph, Les Miles football, text LSU to 35733 right now. Standard text messaging rates apply for official rules and alternative means to enter. Go to textrules.com backslash LSU. Good job by Tyson Jackson who batted that ball down on the inside screen, third down and goal at the five. Three receivers left, two receivers right. Brown back there by himself with no protection. There's a snap. He looks to throw, and he does throw, and it is dropped in the end zone. Oh, my goodness. Tigers got a break there. It was right on the money to Tate, and he didn't catch it. Right there. And he was open. He was, open he was in the end zone, open, too. and the ball was right there, and he just did not catch it. So the Tigers got a break there. And Troy will have to settle for a field goal attempt. Gloosman is 15 of 22. This will be a chip shot, a 22-yarder. This is uh, almost like a point after. 22-yard uh, field goal attempt. The hash marks far side. Heading on the snap. There's the place. And the kick is up, and the uh, kick is good. And so with 10.08 to go... In the first half, LSU has got to dig down deep inside. They trail Troy 17 to 3 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. LSU is the proud flagship university of Louisiana. Located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, LSU's campus, with its distinctive red tile rooftops, graceful archways, and stately oak trees, has been called one of the most beautiful campuses in the world. With spectacular victories on and off the field, LSU is increasing in national prominence. Come visit or take a tour online at lsu.edu. Victory for LSU! Bowl games following a college football season have been a tradition since 1902. This season, there will be 34 postseason bowl games showcasing the nation's most talented student-athletes. This unique postseason experience has provided a lifetime of memories for generations of college football fans. Bowl games have established a remarkable heritage of not only supporting higher education, but also giving back to their local communities. Be a part of the college football experience by attending a bowl game this year. The second quarter, as always, is presented to you by Burger King. Well, all right, here is uh, the um, scoring chart. They went 15 plays, Detroit, 53 yards, used a 401, and got a 23-yard field goal. Total plays, listen to this, this is incredible. Total plays so far in this game. Troy, 41, LSU, 15. 
time of possession. Troy, 12 minutes and 16 seconds. LSU, 7.36. Don't know what the total offense is, but it's going to be just as skewed as... Uh, as that is. That's kind of the game Troy wanted. I mean, I mean they, they wanted they, to control the ball, short pass completions. Well, they have not. Look, they have. They dropped the touchdown pass that series. Yeah. Uh, he's missed a couple of passes. They've had receivers drop three or four, and still it's 17 to three, and they've absolutely controlled the game. Yeah, here it is. Uh, 237 yards for Troy, 46 for LSU. There is a pop-up kick and a fair catch called for it. Well, well, he called a fair catch and then tried to take off running. Some big guy for LSU, and uh, we'll have to check and see who exactly that That's was. Will Blackwell. That's Will Blackwell. Who called for the fair catch. What's Will Blackwell doing calling for a fair catch anyway? I have no wonder. idea, but he did. And then he tried to then run. Then he tried to run, and LSU will get it at the 31-yard um, line. And actually, that's a penalty. That's what I thought, but there is none. There is none on the play. Jared Lee back in at quarterback. Richard Murphy is uh, in as the running back. Two receivers left in an eye formation. Lee, play action fake, drops deep to throw, throws it way downfield, and it is almost intercepted and incomplete at midfield in the direction of LaFell and almost picked off. The Louisiana Start Saving Program. It's never too early to start saving for your child's college education. For details on the Start College Saving Program, log on to startsaving.la.gov. Tonight's game brought in part by the Louisiana Lottery. The Louisiana Lottery, a proud sponsor of LSU Athletics and by your Southern Quality Ford dealer. And reach for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager. Second and 10. Three receivers left and one right. Split back formation. Lee back to throw. Throws it into the ground. And that is illegal grounding the ball. My goodness. What was he doing? Uh, I don't he, know. He just threw it straight into the ground. Well, he could throw it over the sideline, past the line of scrimmage. It's okay to do that. I know that, but he threw it right into the ground, back about 20 yards behind the line of scrimmage. And he had Richard Murphy, who... Uh, you know, was in a position on the screen pay. I, I don't know, Jim. I don't That penalty is a loss of down at the spot of the five, third down. I mean, I, I, I just would think that you would know not to do that. Well, he's done that three times in the last two games. Did that twice against Alabama. It's third Got down. away with it one time. It's third down and 21 now. Back at the 20-yard line. My goodness. This has um, not been a pretty first half. And they're, they are still talking over some things, and I'm not sure what out there. Coach Miles uh, would like an explanation as to why he, the penalty was called, I guess. But I, mean, I, I, I don't think you can do that. Well, if you throw it in the vicinity of the receiver, that's one thing. But the receiver actually was... He wasn't that far from it, but there were a lot of people between Richard Murphy and where the ball hit the ground, uh, and the, the officials are going to pretty much call that every time. If you want to get rid of the football, throw it out of bounds, uh, over the sideline, pass the line of scrimmage. You can do that. Well, now it is third down and 21. A dangerous situation. Two receivers left and one right. Lee in the shotgun. There's the snap, and he rolls right. And he stops and he throws it down the far sidelines and uh, it is incomplete and almost intercepted again. It was much, much closer to the uh, Troy defender than the LSU receiver and the Tiger offense uh, will give it up again. And actually went through his hands. Uh, the way the pass was thrown, that's you know about as good as a punt as long as the interceptor was tackled after he caught it. Uh, but Lee threw it to the inside of the field. Uh, and, and the defender had a much better shot at it than Jared Mitchell did. The defender, Jarek yep. Calvin, uh, the cornerback on that side. All right, Calvin is back to receive. Dalfrey standing at the six-yard line to punt it, and he does. It's a pretty good punt. Fair catch called for and taken in at the 38-yard line, and that's where Troy will start. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the LSU Sports Radio Network.
42-yard punt by uh, Dalfrey. But Troy is back in business at their 39-yard line. Four receiver pattern, two right and two left. Brown in the shotgun, and Harris is back there with them. 17-3, Troy leads LSU, 9.42 to go in the first half. There's the snap, Brown, plenty of time to throw, and does, bat it into the air, incomplete. About the 43-yard line by Chris Hawkins. Pass was um, very well defended that time. And it'll be up second down and 10. Intended for Michael Terry. Now, it was an inside pattern now. He's, he started throwing more of these, and these are a lot more dangerous. Uh, he'd been throwing little spot patterns and outside patterns and things that were very safe. He started to go for a little bit bigger chunks of yardage, but more dangerous passes. Four receiver pattern. Now Brown hands it off to Harris, and this time they close the door on him. And he gets no yardage, maybe one at about the 40-yard line, and that's all. And it'll ring up third down. Ricky Jean-Francois was there, along with a couple of other Tigers. And a flag thrown here at the end. Yeah. Tyson Jackson was being hit by one of the offensive linemen, and Jackson was trying to hold his arm away from him. And I don't know if they saw what Jackson did or if they actually saw the hit. The, the hit came before what Tyson Jackson did. It's he like they're going to walk it off he against was Troy. It looks like, yeah, it looks like they're going to walk it off against Troy. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Yeah. Number 74 on the offense. That's it. That penalty was 15 yards from the succeeding spot. It'll be third down. Well, let's see if LSU can take advantage of that now. Well, that's really a stupid penalty for an offensive lineman after the play. Yeah, so he now it's third down. 15 yards, but you lose the down, too, because the play was over already. So, so now it's really third and 24. And Troy is seven out of nine on third down conversions. LSU stopped him the last couple of times, and maybe that's the little bit of spark that LSU needed to uh, get some momentum going in this ballgame. Three receivers on the right side, just one on the left this time. Harris is back there with Brown in the shotgun. There's a snap. Brown rolling to the far side, looking to throw. And he does throw, and it is caught, I believe. Yes, it is. Up around the 43-yard line. So, I mean, they got almost all of it back. The pass was complete to Williams, but it will bring up a fourth down. But that was a tremendous pass completion. Brown rolled out to the right to give himself some room and get away from the rush. And he threaded the needle to Cornelius Williams over on the sideline between Chris Hawkins and Felon Jones. Perfect pass, nice reception. But it's fourth down and about seven, and they'll punt. So they got 16 on the play. Here is a Goggin. He'll punt it to Holiday, who's standing back around the 15. Still 8.21 to go in the half, and there is that running a kick. It's a line drive that's going to hit and bounce and take a roll. Look at that thing roll all the way down to the six-yard line. And that's where LSU will start. 51 yards. And there's not much you can do about that. I mean, it, you can't hardly field it and try to run it back because it bounces and rolls. Time out of the ball game, 8.09 to go. Troy has dominated the first half. They lead LSU 17-3, to but the Tigers will have it, however, at their own seven when they return the LSU Sports Radio Network. Today we salute you, Mr. X-Pro football commentator guy. You offer keen, in-depth analysis, like scoring more points will help you win. I did not know that. Your physique was once built to handle the rigors of professional football. Now it's built to handle a 23-pound honey-glazed hand. I'm still hungry. So crack open a nice cold Bud Light night of sports insight. Light beer eyes of St. Louis, Missouri. It's the Chevy Red Tag event, where the price on the tag is the price you pay. And every Chevy pickup and SUV is available with an EPA-estimated 20 miles per gallon highway or better. Toyota and Ford can't say that. At participating dealers only, tax title license dealer fees and optional equipment extra. Not available with other offers. See dealer for details. Take delivery by 1509. But Red Tag deals won't hang around long, so stop in today. See some red and save some green at the Chevy Red Tag event. See your local Chevy dealer. The second quarter, as always, is presented to you by Burger King. 
8 9 to go in the half. LSU just simply must get the offense going here. They trail 17-3, but the defense now has begun, begun to stop uh, Troy a little bit. They've caused them to have to punt the ball a few times, but it just has not been anything, anything available offensively for LSU tonight. George Jefferson has run one series. Jared Lee has gone the rest of the way, but the numbers are just really, really bad. I formation, Scott is the running back. He's lined up in the end zone because the line of scrimmage is the seven-yard line. LSU has uh, been back there most of the night in, 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 in starting series except following kickoffs. Lone man is LaFell going in motion to the far side. Lee under center. With the football, he hands it off to Scott. Scott to stop for no gain. I mean, he can do nothing tonight. Well, they've got nine men in the box. You're not going to be able to run against them. They have two more men than you can block. Well, that's because they know LSU just not going to throw. They know LSU's right, so, which means you got to be able to throw it. Yeah. But they, they know from here LSU just refuses to try to throw it, and so they're going to run into nine men. And, you know, that's... And Pretty good odds for the yep, defense. Sure is. And that's exactly the same thing they're looking at here. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Lee hands the ball off again and getting two yards this time, maybe. As Scott to about the uh, eight yard line, and it'll be third down and about seven or eight. And now LSU's got third and long. They bring Demetrius Bird, Terrence Tolliver in. And now they're going to be in, I presume, a passing formation. But you would think if they're going to do that on third down, why not do it on first or second down or whatever? Two receivers right and one left. Shotgun formation. Scott is back there with Lee. The fell goes in motion. There's a snap, and Lee is back in the end zone to throw. And he does, and there it is. It's intercepted at the 25 to the 20. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Unbelievable. That truly is unbelievable. Truly is unbelievable. The pass thrown, yep. and, and Troy has outstanding safeties. But LSU gets in the spread formation here on third down and long. throws into a position where the defensive back is backing up into the path of the football. He juggled it, but he made the catch and then took it into the end zone for the score 23 to 3 for Troy. And you talk about a shocked stadium and sideline. Here's a Gloosman to uh, tack on the extra point. And it is 24 to 3 with 646 to go in the first half. That is the seventh pick six that Lee has thrown this year and uh, just don't know what LSU can do about that. They don't want to throw the ball and they get into the position when the opposition they have to throw the ball and it's pretty easy to defend it when you know they're going to throw the ball and you pretty well know where they're going to throw it. Well Jim there's a safe place you can always throw and that's over the sideline so if you're going to throw a deep sideline out so that the ball is either caught by your guy or it is incomplete. That's one place kind of to start. And they did that, as a matter of fact, last week against Alabama three times on the last drive where they scored the touchdown. Uh, Terrence Tolliver just ran deep sideline cuts, made the receptions. But the other team's going to stop you from doing that. you got to be able to do something else. Let's go down to Jordan. Well, I agree with what both of y'all are saying. Uh, there's one glaring weakness, obviously. Obviously with Jared Lee and I, I could see it from here he dropped back and he stared at his receiver and stared at him and stared at him and stared at him. I knew where it was going everybody on the Troy team knew where it was going he just can't do that you've got to be able to look off quickly and find something else to do with it rather than just stare him down all the way through you're right and he has continually done that that is the fourth straight game that he has thrown at least one pick six it, it is truly, straight. truly amazing never seen anything like it. holiday and uh, williams back deep there is the uh, pop-up kickoff again for troy taken by shot by johnson quinn johnson and he steps out of bounds up around Football the 46 yard line. By quinn johnson. and so lsu will have it again with 6.45 to play in the first half 
you know, Jim, it, 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 it is easy for quarterbacks to train themselves to actually turn your head one direction, but you can move your eyes and look at, you can stare down your receiver, but you can train yourself to aim your head somewhere else. Yep. Now, but Jared Lee obviously hadn't done that. Maybe they ought to get him a helmet that sits crooked so that it looks to the defense like he's looking somewhere else. Jefferson will go in a quarterback. Two receivers left and one right. Shotgun formation. Scott is back there with Jefferson. Waiting on the snap, and there it is. And he hands the ball off to Scott, and Scott gets a yard. Maybe, maybe doesn't get a yard. Goes down at the line of scrimmage. Ran into Sheffield and others. Time for today's tailgate tip brought to you by Eckridge Meats. Make a list of all the items you want to take along and check them off as you pack. Eckridge is the official smoked sausage of the SEC. Trust the taste. Well, I, I would think that Troy believes, wouldn't you, Doug, that uh, else you're still not going to throw the ball with a freshman uh, quarterback in there who's only thrown two passes this year. But he is in the pistol with Williams, three receivers on the left and one on the right. That is definitely a passing formation, but he's going to run it and get some uh, nothing. The option play running to, to the right, and he got nothing. It'll be third down and nine. Yeah, I think Troy feels pretty confident about that. And I think Troy feels pretty confident about a lot of things right now. No question. Like their ability to win this game. Uh, and LSU's got to do something to disabuse them of that notion. What do you think they can do, though? I mean, that's well, the honest to, question. You, you what have can to be you able to do things successfully third, if you ever want to be successful. Third down and eight, LSU is one for seven in third down conversions. Three receivers right and one left. Short, Jefferson back to throw, and he does, and it's incomplete. He threw it the low and out of the reach of Dixon to the 45, and the Tigers are three and out. will punt it away. Well, they came with the blitz. I mean, they did the right thing. You have a young freshman, very little experience, and they brought a blitz on backside, hit him before he threw the ball, and the ball went off to the side. It wasn't anywhere near Dixon. Dixon was covered anyway, but Troy is very aggressive defensively, and they're going to send people, and they'll gamble with you that you cannot pick out the open receiver as their quarterback knows how to pick out the open receiver. Calvin back to receive, and Dalfrey to punt it away. And there's the kick. High hanging wobbly spiral. Fair catch is call, a call, but they're going to let it hit and bounce out of bounds at the 25 yard line. A 35 yard punt and no return. Troy will start at their um, 25 yard line. The new uh, Mushroom and Swiss Steakhouse Burger from Burger King is the ultimate comfort burger. If your day is looking down, you can always turn to the Mushroom and Swiss Steakhouse Burger made of 100% Angus beef smothered in melted Swiss cheese and piled high with mushrooms. For a limited time only, participation may vary. Total yards in the ballgame. Troy, 256. LSU, 39. Brown to throw, and he does, and it is incomplete up around the 27-28 uh, yard line in the direction of Williams. Good defensive play by Chris Hawkins, who came up aggressively to go after the interception, ran right through Williams, went over his back, actually, and tried to give himself a chance at the interception. That's flag what LSU's going to have to do. There is a flag on the play, dropped uh, at the line of scrimmage, and the, the penalty is against Troy, but I don't know what it is. I think a legal shift or a legal motion. A legal shift. Yeah. On the offense. Not set for after the snap. Five yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. So it is first and uh, 15 for Troy back at the, their 20-yard line, just, just behind the 21. Brown back there by himself. Three receivers right and one left. Now they'll look over and get the sign from the sidelines. Now he steps back. There's a snap. Plenty of time to throw over the middle. It is a complete and then down that at about the original line of scrimmage had his journey again and a nice tackle that time as soon as he caught the ball. Well, Chad Jones made the stop and it'll be second down and about 10. But Jernigan gets Chad Jones in that trail position, and Jones is not a very good man-to-man -man cover guy either. And uh, he's made two good tackles. Here's a handoff to uh, Harris, and he is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. That time, they went on the quick snap, which LSU has to be aware of and leery of. And it's Chad Jones again who made the stop that time. Sometimes when they go down into set position, they don't always raise up. 
and looked to the sidelines, and that time they took the quick snap. So it's third down and 10. Three receivers right and two left. Brown back there by himself. Now they do. Stand up and look to the far sideline. 4.13 to go in the half. Troy State all over LSU, 24-3. There's the snap. Brown rolls, looks to throw, and he does throw, and he throws it incomplete out of bounds in the far sidelines, and so the LSU defense does their job again, and that's what, four straight now, I believe, that they have stopped uh, Troy. But, of course, LSU handed Troy seven points. The offense handed Troy seven points on the seventh pick six of the year that Jared Lee has thrown in, what is that, 13 interceptions? 13 interceptions and seven. 16, huh? 15. 15 interceptions, seven returned for a touchdown. That may go into the record book somewhere. All right, here's Goggins back to punt it away. Holiday standing at the uh, 39. There's a snap, and there's the kick. And it's going to bounce and be fielded uh, by LSU. Uh, an up back at the, uh, that Jones, I believe, at about the 45-yard line. But <clears throat> he took a chance. The ball was bouncing and spinning, spinning it over in. But he, he took it in, could not break free of a defender, went down at the 45-yard line. But LSU has excellent field position at their 49. So let's see. That is one, two, three, four straight punts for Troy. The LSU offense just has been un ineffective. Jefferson back in at quarterback. Keelan Williams is the running back. Pistol formation. Two receivers right and one left. Now Dixon sets up in the slot on the left side. There's a snap and the handoff to Keelan Williams, and he gets about three up to the 48-yard line. Sheffield, the defensive end, came up and made the stop. Jim, LSU wants to get back in this game. They're going to have to get into it right now. 3.35 remaining in the first half. LSU will not have the ball to start the second half. Remember, right. Troy deferred. So they're going to get the first possession in the second half with a 24-3 lead. If LSU wants to start closing the gap, now's the drive when they're going to have to do it. Second down and seven, three receivers right and one left. Jefferson rolls to the near side, Cox and fires, and it's caught by Jared Mitchell, and he goes down. Oh, he dropped, did he drop that? You have got to be kidding me. And a good pass by Jefferson, a roll out to the right. Holy cow. The wide receiver set up on the outside. Now Jefferson sprinted to the right to give himself a shorter angle to throw it, made a nice throw. And uh, Jared Mitchell Goodness went gracious. down on the knee to make the reception, came up, but he never had complete control, so he dropped the football third down and seven, and uh, Jefferson's second big play as a college Well, that He should have had a first down on should that one. There's down. no way that ball should have been dropped. Three receivers right and one left, pistol formation. Jefferson rolling with the option, tosses it out to Keelan Williams, looking for some room to run. He's running hard, fighting hard, and has the first down. Down to the 42-yard line. That is LSU's, listen to this, LSU's second first down of the ballgame. And Jefferson very animated as he comes over to the huddle, clapping his hands, trying to encourage his teammates, and the crowd responds to it they do. very positively. This was an option pitch. He got hit in the chops. Jefferson did, made the pitch timely, and just at the right moment so that Keelan Williams got turned up field first down at the 41-yard line of Troy. Two receivers left and one right, shotgun formation. Jefferson waiting on the snap. Points to the left. There is the snap, a short drop. He looks to throw, but now he's going to run. And he pushes his way down to the uh, 40 for about a two-yard gain on the play. But he did not throw the ball when there was no receiver open. And he kept it and ran it, and he picked up about two yards on the play. Two minutes and 19 seconds left to play in the first half. Tigers really need to put the ball in the end zone here. Before they go into the locker room, they trail 24 to 3. Two receivers right, shotgun formation. Williams. Well, it's uh, Johnson back there with Jefferson. There's the snap. Jefferson rolls to the near side, and he's going to run it. Doesn't get much. 
inside the 40 down to the 39 got a yard Troy did a nice job defensively Jefferson was trying to get to the outside and Quinn Johnson wanted to to cut block the outside leverage defender and he was not able to he was forced to kick him outside that makes Jefferson cut it back upfield where all the pursuit came over and he held uh, picked up maybe about a yard yard and a half but again a big play third down and uh, just short maybe of eight yards to go for the first down 125 yep. remaining here in the first half Scott is back in the game two receivers left and one right Jefferson in the shotgun waiting on the snap and there it is rolls to the left Cox and fires and it's badly thrown and hit the ground down around the 30 yard line not near a receiver and it's fourth down well on the play did that get tipped or something or I just don't know nobody there Jefferson rolled out to the left though that's a tough well, throw that's as hard he rolls to left, throw. trying to throw it back a right-handed passer 109 remaining I would think LSU just go ahead and go for it here I mean why why not 109 if you, if you don't complete it you still got Troy and, and in what? A long way, a long way away from the end zone. I mean, you can't just give in here. I agree with you. LSU caused a timeout because they were confused as to what they were going to do, if they were going to do anything. And so they will talk it over. Well, they've got to go for it. I mean, this is a series where LSU's got to decide. I mean, they, look how excited the crowd got when they picked up a first, a first down. down. Only the second first down of the first half. I mean, that that's truly unbelievable to, to have to say that with with only about two and a half minutes left in the first half, that that was LSU's second first down of the first half. This is a game that the, the players and coaches would hope that they had never invented photography or any sort of medium where you can memorialize an event that you'd have to rely upon the human memory yeah, alone. nobody would remember and people it. would after a while you know the memory because this is a memory you would like to fade as quickly as possible they will not be able to do that kevin wagner and those guys go all over the state <laughs> taking a bunch of shots and and they will be able to look at this one over and over and over again and that's not a good thing unless LSU makes a statement and gets back in this game this could be a great comeback now that's the way you have Three receivers left and one right. Shotgun formation. Scott is back there with. Snap. Here comes the fourth down play. He looks and throws. Oh, my goodness. He had a man wide open at the 22-yard line. Completely wide open with nobody near him. The ball behind him. That was Tolliver. And LSU gives it up. Yeah, Tolliver was wide open. Wide, absolutely <coughs> wide open. Well, good effort, uh, partially. As Troy takes it over, 104 remaining. And let's see how far away they are. Well, let's see. Add up the yardage. They're you know, about uh, 50, um, 52 yards, I think, or something like that. Give me my math here. Okay, 61, that's even better, right? 
There's a snap to Brown. He looks to throw, and he does throw it way downfield, and it's out of bounds down around the 35-yard line on the LSU side of the field. That's good cover by Patrick Peterson. Yes, it was. It was in the direction of Burton. Stops the clock with 59 seconds left to play. You know, this has got to be a real tough feeling for, for this LSU team to have such a problem. Uh, being able to, you know, the quarterback position is just a problem. And, and it, it's, there's no quick fix there. you got two young men, you know, who have been thrust into a position that uh, they're just not ready for, just not prepared for in, in, uh, in Lee and Jefferson. You know, Andrew Hatch had the uh, most experience. There's a flag on the play, incidentally, and they're talking it over. And it's just really unfortunate, Doug, that he, uh, he got injured several games ago. And whether he'll even be able to play anymore the rest of the regular season yeah. remains to be seen. And, you know, there, the question is how much of a difference could he have made? And the answer to that is I think he might have made a big difference. But it's just not to be. And so LSU, uh, you know, you can't trade for players <laughs> in college. You got to play what you got. Receivers on both sides on second and ten. Now here we go. Brown waiting on the snap. Hands the ball off to Harris, and Harris is thrown for a loss. The ball came out, and let's see if they call that a fumble. I think they did. And if they do, it was LSU has got it at the 32-yard line. That was uh, Drake Nevis who grabbed hold of Harris, who was handed the ball, and the ball popped out. And so with 51 seconds left to play in the first half, LSU has a chance to put some points on the board. And that's what making a play will do for you. All yep. you got to do is make one here and there. LSU with 51 seconds left. They've got time, though. Two timeouts remaining. The ball in the 33-yard thir the line, and LSU takes it over, first down. All right, pistol formation. Jefferson is the quarterback. Two receivers left and one right. Scott is back there. Now the officials blow the whistle, and they're going to come over and talk about something. I don't, I don't know. Maybe they're going to review that. Or maybe Troy ask to have it reviewed. No, that's just a timeout. All the official said was that uh, Troy called a timeout, so didn't say anything about reviewing it, Doug. Well, we don't know if he wanted to say. He knows that his mic is not working, or at least yeah. But I mean, we he can't hear. He didn't say anything about being it under review. He just said timeout. Yeah, he's talking to the people. Oh, okay, so it is going to be reviewed. So we're in the holding pattern. Twenty-four to three. Troy leading LSU. 24-3 with 51 seconds left in the first half. The LSU got the opening kickoff, went three and out, and Troy marched 88 yards to score to make it 7 to nothing. On the next possession, LSU got a uh, career-long 52-yard field goal by Colt David to make it 7-3, to and then Troy came right back and went 67 yards in seven plays to make it 14-3. to Then got, in the second quarter, got a 22-yard field goal to make it 17-3. to and then with 6.46 left in the first half, Jerry Lee threw another pick six interception, which gave them their third touchdown of the game. And that's where we stand right now as they're reviewing this play. As to whether or not it was actually a fumble and whether or not LSU does have the ball well, at the 33-yard uh, line. The Troy argument is that he was down when the ball came loose. And the counter argument is that although he was down, he had not touched the ground yet because he was on top of the defender who made the tackle when the ball came loose. It's because in, until something other than your feet or hand touches the ground, until that happens, you're not down. If you're laying on top of a tackler, listen. you're not down. He does well. He doesn't have a. It's confirmed. I can read his mouth. He said that the it, on the the. Uh, play the ruling on the field was confirmed and LSU does have the ball first to 10 at the 51 so and that's the right call it is the right call so let's see if the Tigers can take advantage and, and, and turn this thing around did he borrow that microphone from Jordy you think I don't know Jordy is 
actually worked. Gordy got him a good one now. Three receivers left and one right. Shotgun formation. Jefferson is at quarterback. Charles Scott is at running back. They got a deal on Jordy's old one. That, I don't know, but now we, we're, we're still not ready to go for some reason. Oh, the, that's because the official is trying to get something, a mic that will work. So they're icing LSU a little bit here. Not a little bit, a lot. Tigers having a lot of time to think about it. They had three receivers over on the left side and one on the near side. That's LaFell. And Jordan Jefferson, the true freshman, is the quarterback with Scott back there, and they'll set up in the shotgun. First and ten Tigers at the Troy 33. All right, waiting on the snap. And there it is. Jefferson wants to throw, but he's going to run. 35-30. He is going to be out of bounds at about the 27-yard uh, line. About four yards short of a first down. Lang, the defensive end, ran him out of bounds. If, jo if Jefferson sees a little space to run, he's going to do it. And he got five and stopped the clock with 45 seconds left. So it's second down and five. Well, he got a little ex excitement, though, in the stadium by picking that up, pulling the ball down, running for about five yards. Troy zone blitzing. They're, they're blitzing linebackers and secondary people and dropping defensive linemen back in coverage, hoping to confuse him, and he picked that up pretty well that time. Two receivers left and one right. Scott back there with Jefferson in the shotgun. He drops the throw. Now he is going to run. Breaks one tackle, 25, and is going to go down about a yard short of the first down at the 24-yard line, brought down by Moore. Well, it just gives, and LSU will call a timeout to stop the clock with 35 seconds. It just gives LSU a new dimension, Doug, that the, the defensive team has to be aware of. They can't just, as we were talking about early, load up at the line of scrimmage because they know that you can't throw the ball or you're not going to throw it, and they can't concede that you're going to throw it when you line up in the shotgun either because yeah. Jefferson can run the ball. Yeah, it does. One thing you do know, though, is that he is not Pat White. I mean, he's not doesn't have that type of quickness running the ball, but if with the combination of his ability to be the better, the best runner among the LSU quarterbacks, and if he can bring himself up as a passer to be equal to uh, the other two, and not throw interceptions, then he's a, a good combination to run yep. in this offense. That's right. He's able to do that because that move. Uh, he got in the open field. He's going to learn how to break some of those tackles, and he still picked up within a couple of yards of the first down. So yep. he had some excitement. That's uh, that's what you want, and uh, I think he's acquitted himself quite well. Made a couple of throws that were a little off the mark. One that should have been uh, caught without question. But look, he's getting into the game. Yep. He's learning the game a little bit, and that's a good thing. Third down and two. The Tigers have one more timeout. 35 seconds left in the half. Trailing Troy 24-3. Jefferson will go under center and hand the ball to Scott. And Scott, ooh, I don't think he got it. He just flat did not get it. Boy, Troy did that time. Again, load it up in the middle. And so I think LSU has no choice here except to uh, go for a field goal. It's fourth down and a yard with 13 seconds left to go in the first half. Les Miles is talking to the official, and it's down to five seconds. We're going to have to call a timeout and try the field goal and stop the clock with three seconds. Well, I, I am uh, amazed about a lot of things that I've seen here tonight, Doug, but, but one of them is how Troy has been able to stop Charles Scott. I mean, that's just absolutely not anything that we thought we would see with LSU's big offensive line. I mean, the way LSU ran against Alabama, which is one of the best defenses in the nation, they simply have not been able to run a lick against Troy here tonight. Well, as the game went on, though, against Alabama, LSU ran less effectively because, and, and Troy has the luxury of not being number one in the country, and they can come up here and put nine people at the line of scrimmage because they have seen what happens when LSU throws it, and they've now experienced the benefits of what happens when LSU throws it. So they, you know, they decided to gamble defensively, and LSU hasn't responded. They have not been able to run, nor have they been able to pass. Consequently, they're stuck in this 24 Cole David will deficit. try a 42-yard field goal. There's the snap. Oh, and it's fumbled by Dalfrey, and he threw the ball. Oh, my goodness, what a mess. 
And that's the way the first half is going to come to an end, and that is just a messy way to end a messy first half. It was mishandled. LSU got nothing out of it, and they will go to the locker room trailing Troy by the score of 24 to 3. Let's see if we can go down to, uh, to Jordy if he's ready to uh, get Coach Miles. Let's go to Jordy. All right, thank you very much. Well, Coach, uh, obviously not the kind of half you wanted, but this sets up a heck of a comeback opportunity. What do you have to do now in the second quarter? Uh, offensively, we got to get it going. I mean, the thing that's happened is, you know, our quarterbacks are not throwing the football. They're ganged up on our run, and we're not moving the football like we're used to. Okay. And uh, we got to get it going on offense first. Defensively, you know, they're playing pretty decent, yeah. you know, they, at times. And so play like we played in the, on the defensive side and get it going on offense. We get it going on offense, we're in this game. Okay, Coach, thank you very much. So there you have it, guys. Uh, down 24-3, whatever could have gone wrong did. But now that sets up a second half. Back to you. All right, Jordy, thank hey, you very hey. much. And uh, we certainly do hope that uh, the Tigers come out with fire in their eyes in the second half. As here at halftime, they trail Troy. That, incidentally, was the Capital One Bank coaches interview. They trailed Troy 24 to 3. Crystal Hot Sauce Halftime Show begins after this on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Doug Morrow along with Jim Hawthorne and Jordy Hulberg. We're about a minute and a half away from kick for the second half. LSU trailing Troy University 3-24. to Dismal first half. And I'll tell you about the statistics from the first half of tonight's game after we take 10 seconds for station identification. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. Well, let's talk about some of the statistics. Uh, Troy, 24 points to three for the LSU Tigers. 14 first downs for Troy, two for LSU. 51 yards rushing for Troy in only 11 tries. LSU, 47 yards in 20 attempts. Passing yards, Troy, 204, LSU, 16. Passing 20 completions, 38 attempts for Troy. LSU, three completions in 15 attempts, plus one other completion that they call an interception that was returned for a touchdown. Total offense, Troy, 49, 255. LSU, 35 attempts, 63 yards. Time of possession, LSU, 1433. And that really is an aberration because it was 2-1 to one for a long time, most of the first half. Troy had it 15-27. Troy had 7 of 11 third down conversions. LSU, 2 of 11. Penalties didn't play that big a part. Troy had one that hurt him an awful lot. 4 for 35 yards for Troy, 5 for 17 for LSU. The John Deere rushing leader for LSU for the first half, brought to you by your Louisiana John Deere dealers, is Charles Scott, 32 yards. 16 of those he gained in one carry. Uh, 3.1 average with 10 rushes for him. Jared Lee was 2 of 8 with one interception. Jordan Jefferson only 1 of 6. LSU will be kicking it here to start the second half. They'll be kicking from the north end, a kicking to the south. Uh, crowd has thinned quite a bit, and it was thin to start with, but it has thinned dramatically over halftime, and so it'll be pretty easy for folks to get home. I hope that these stay, and I hope the Tigers do better. Give you play-by-play, -play, Jim Hawthorne. Jasper kicks it away, and it is going to be fielded at the six-yard line. Back up to the 10 to the 15, and he runs into a bunch of trouble and goes down at the 21-yard line. Very nice job of the Tigers kickoff coverage team. Calvin on the return, and so Troy will set up. I believe they will put it right at about the 20-yard line. 
And the uh, third quarter is uh, brought to you by the Louisiana Campaign for Tobacco-Free Living. Let's quickly check in with Jordan. Well, LSU coaches say uh, in unison, we've got to set the tempo quickly here to start the second half. That means defensively, you got to get us a three and out. Then they want to really establish Charles Scott, get him going. They feel like they have enough time if they can run it early and then mix in some play action passes from there. Let's see if that happens. Three receivers on the left side, man in motion to the near side. Brown with a straight snap, back to throw, has plenty of time, has his man complete for a big gain up to the 29-yard line. It'll bring up second down and two, a gain of eight. Tate made the catch with nobody around him. Then LSU converged on him to make the stop. We're putting eight of our $5 regular footlongs on the new Subway Everyday Value Menu with $5 footlongs. Eat fresh every day at Subway Restaurant. Subway, eat fresh. Two receivers right and one left. Actually, they say he got nine. It's second down and a yard. Brown back there by himself. Has the ball, has plenty of time to throw, and throws. It's complete and then hit very hard, but not until after the first down is uh, made. That was a Jernigan who was hit very hard by uh, Peterson, but it's a first down. But that's the contact you've got to have, Jim. If after the reception, and this time Patrick Peterson, he was not the person responsible for covering. This was a zone. He came from the outside and tackled Jernigan very, very hard. Those receivers remember that after a few licks. First and 10 at the 34-yard uh, line. Two receivers right and one left. Harrison is uh, uh, Harris in the backfield along with Nolan. And Brown is back and will uh, now quickly set up in the pistol formation. Waiting on the snap, there it is. He will throw it across the way. It's complete on the screen and uh, getting back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. On the far side is um, Silvoy. And Chris and Hawkins and Chad out Jones, yeah. And after a yard gain at the 35-yard line, it'll bring up second and nine. Good job by Chris Hawkins to fight off the block over there of the other wide receiver. And uh, Chad Jones came over to give him a hand. Four receiver pattern, two on both sides. Out of the shotgun, here's Brown waiting on the snap. Drops back to throw, plenty of time. Throws to a wide open receiver, and he catches it and goes down at about the 40-yard line. And so it will bring up third down. Third down and about two. Pass was complete to Burton. And quickly, Troy is ready to go. But now they'll race up and look to the far sidelines for the play. Four receiver pattern, two on both sides. Harris is back there with Brown. Big important third down play here. There's a snap. Brown looks to throw and does, and it is caught for a first down. Tigers just could not stop it. Complete to Davis, and it's first and 10, Troy. Up around the 46-yard line. I don't know how you stop that. Well, with that many receivers out there and absolutely no pressure on Brown, he, he's had no pressure on him. Today. Well, you can't pressure a quarterback who gets rid of the ball that quickly that's right. because that's not, I mean, the, the pass is gone in a second and a half. You're not yep. going to get to him. All you can do is get your hands up and try to make him throw it between you and then tackle the receiver hard. There's a snap. Brown drops the throw. Plenty of time. Now he's going to throw on the run, and he overthrows down around the 40-yard line. A man who was well defended, and that time the Tigers did flush him out of the pocket. He had some room to run, but he tried to throw on the run, and he missed the intended receiver, and it'll bring up second and ten. Tiger fans, grab your mobile phone because it's now time to text to win. Presented by Verizon Wireless for your chance to win an autograph Les Miles football. Text LSU to 35733 right now. Standard text messaging rules apply. Four receiver pattern. Brown looks to the sidelines to get the play. 12-27 to go in the third. 24-3. Troy leads LSU. Three receivers left. Two right. There's a snap. Brown, plenty of time. Throws and batted into the air. Incomplete. Nice job at midfield by Perry Riley. Good defensive job as the Tigers had double coverage that time on the intended receiver. And so it is third down and ten. And LSU with a little bit better job that time as they got their hands up at the line of scrimmage. And it's third down and ten. Four receiver pattern. Shotgun formation. Brown and Harris waiting on the snap. Now he looks to the far sidelines. LSU's defense shows a three-man front right now. 
Third and ten from the Troy 47. There's the snap. Deep drop. Brown steps up in the pocket and throws way downfield. The man wide open, and he's got it. First down at the LSU 23-yard line. And it is fortunate for LSU that the pass, that the, the, the receiver fell down after he made the reception. 31 yards on the play. And it's first and 10 Troy at the LSU 22. Four receiver pattern, two on both sides. Brown and Harris back there. The play is signaled in from the far side, but Troy has taken the opening kickoff and marched from there 21. There is a snap, Brown. Plenty of time, throws, got a man wide open at the 15, at the 10, first and goal to go at the 8-yard line. Pass is complete to the Harris coming out of the backfield. Well, Jim Brown has all the time that he wants, all and that time, the time in the world. one thing you will notice from him is he's looking at one receiver, looking at a second one, and then he's going to the third one for the completion, as he was that time, and uh, the receiver was wide open in the left flat, carried it down inside the 10 for a first and goal. Three receivers left and one right. Troy has taken the opening kickoff of the second half and threatening to add to their 24-3 score. There's a snap. Brown looks to throw and does to a wide open man at the five and he's into the end zone for the score and Troy just marched it right down LSU's throat. Eight yard touchdown throw and it is 30 to three. And this is a 79 yard drive to start the second half. The last thing LSU wanted, as Jordy said, the Tiger coaches told him that you got to three and out them and let's get back in the game. Well, they didn't do that and they let him go 79 yards. Great play by Brown, though, and you got to give him a lot of credit oh, I mean, for that. With, with the quarterback play of LSU, watching this guy, he really looks incredible. There's a kick, and it is good. And so the, the touchdown pass was to Harris coming out of the backfield. 11-13 left to play in the third quarter. And LSU is taking it on the chin from Troy. It's Troy 31, LSU 3, LSU Sports Radio Network. The Southeastern Conference will return to the Georgia Dome for the 2008 SEC Football Championship game. This event began in 1992 when the SEC became the first conference in college football history to establish a title game between two divisional champions. Be a part of this exciting event as festivities begin December 5th and culminate with the 2008 championship game December 6th in Atlanta. Don't miss the Dr. Pepper SEC Fanfare, the Regents Bank Coaches Luncheon at the Hyatt Regency Atlanta, and the SEC Legends Dinner presented by AT&T as the SEC celebrates the tradition of the football championship game. LSU is the proud flagship university of Louisiana. Located in the capital city of Baton Rouge, LSU's campus, with its distinctive red tile rooftops, graceful archways, and stately oak trees, has been called one of the most beautiful campuses in the world. With spectacular victories on and off the field, LSU is increasing in national prominence. Come visit or take a tour online at lsu.edu. The third quarter of each ball game is presented to you by the Louisiana Campaign for Tobacco-Free Living. Well, it has not been pretty for LSU, to say the least. 79 yards on 10 plays to start the second half for Troy. They use 341 on the clock, and they lead LSU. It's hard to say it. 31-3. Brown tonight has picked LSU apart. 28 out of 48 for 283 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, nobody, Stafford, Tebow, those guys didn't do this the way he has picked LSU apart. 330, what is this, six, what's this, 60, oh, huh. That's hard to believe, too. I thought that was the number of plays or something. That's the total yardage for LSU, 63 on the night. Here's the kickoff, taken at the 27, at the 30, at the 35, and Trenton Holiday runs it out of bounds up around the 38-yard line. So 
So LSU will start first and 10 at their 38. 334 yards for Troy, 63 for LSU. That is uh, mind-boggling. LSU Athletics would like to thank tonight's game sponsor, Capital One Bank. Capital One Bank, the official bank of LSU Athletics. Jared Lee will go back out at quarterback. Two receivers left and one right. Scott is the running back. LSU sets up in the pistol. Dixon comes in motion to the near side. There's the snap and the handoff to Scott, and he stopped for about a four-yard loss. He almost fumbled the ball. Lee almost did not get the ball in his hands. And then Lee had to run to try to make the handoff. It uh, really did not look very pretty. Well, unfortunately, there, there has not been very much that has looked pretty for LSU tonight. Second down and 12. Three receivers left and one right. Pistol formation, Scott and Lee. Second down and 12. There's the snap. Runs the other way. Tosses it to Scott. And he loses another yard. Tackle at about the 34-yard line. And it'll be third down and about 14. Well, LSU down 31-3. to three, Starts out with a botched handoff, off-tackle play to the right that gained nothing. Uh, with an option to the left, when I say gain nothing, actually they both lost. Well, and now here's the dangerous situation. And this is the situation. LSU is third down and 13, and they got to throw it. Three receivers right and one left. Lee rolls to the near side. Cox and fires. It is caught this time by Jared Mitchell, and he fights got hard the first and down. may have the first down. Now that a boy, out a way to go. And That's Jim, what LSU needed yeah. to do right there. And this is the play that they ran against Alabama in that drive, a roll out to the right to give him a shorter angle to throw it. Jared Mitchell split out wide right, just went down past the marker and stopped. Third. And he was sitting there waiting on the ball, completion first down. Third first down of the game for LSU. Three receivers left and one right. Shotgun formation, Lee. The lay handoff to Scott, and there's just nothing there. Nothing. Now, I will say, Jim, they're not going to let you run that previous play all the time. There are ways to stop it, uh, but you have to blitz on that side to stop it, and it opens up other things. Problem is, Jared Lee doesn't seem to have confidence in any other throw except that one throw. Does that one pretty good. Scott has carried it 13 times for 27 yards tonight. Keelan Williams is checked back into the game. Second down and eight. He got two that time. Pistol formation. Lee checks to the near sidelines for the play. Now waits for the football. There it is. He throws across the way. It's caught by LaFell. And LaFell jukes one and another and then gets a nice gain on the play. Down to about the um, Troy 42-yard line before Calvin comes up to make the stop. And it'll bring up third down. And LSU is going to need about three. Louisiana Campaign for Tobacco-Free Living encourages you to support policies that protect all workers from secondhand smoke exposure. Big play for LSU in this game. They just almost have got to pick this up. Two receivers right and one left. Shotgun formation, Williams and Lee. In the backfield, look at them. They have loaded up at the line of scrimmage, and Lee looks to throw, and it's in, almost intercepted and should have been. At the 37. Well, he threw it behind LaFell. It really wasn't any way that LaFell could have caught the ball, and it almost was intercepted by the strong safety, Williams. Let's go to Jordan. Well, now you're starting to see some, some interaction and frustration. Jared Lee, Brandon LaFell talking to one another. You should come back to the meet of all, and Brandon LaFell going, I'm supposed to go with her. The defense isn't. And uh, so it, it just a lot of frustration has set in, and, uh, boy, not, good. Not, not pretty. Fourth down and three. Tigers will go for it. Lee rolls to the near side. He's in deep trouble, and he throws it. My word. Almost in the stands on the near side. And flags come out. A late flag. Lay up, late flag on the play. Jordy is telling us that an unsportsmanlike conduct uh, call is going to be uh, 
called against Troy, which will give LSU a break. Well, and it depends. It depends. If the pass was incomplete before it, there was a change of possession. So Troy will have a 15-yard penalty against That's them, but they'll still have possession. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 98 on the defense. That penalty was 15 yards. After the play was over, it's still first down, Troy. Yeah, okay. It, Doug is absolutely right. It happened after the play. So Troy has the ball, and we have timeout. 8.02 to go in the third. It is all Troy. They lead LSU 31-3 to on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Founded in 1935, the LSU Press is one of the oldest and largest university presses in the South and among the most outstanding publishers of scholarly books in the country. Books from LSU Press have earned many prestigious honors, including four Pulitzer Prizes, and it's the only university press to win in both fiction and poetry. LSU victories are everywhere you look. The Dr. Pepper SEC Fanfare is the place to experience the pregame excitement of the SEC football championship game. Featuring more than 200,000 square feet of interactive fun, fans of all ages won't want to miss attractions like the Press Box Stage, the SEC TV Experience, and the Celebrity Quarterback Challenge. Located in Hall C of the World Congress Center, Fanfare is just a short walk from the Georgia Dome. Be a part of the SEC Championship Experience and the Dr. Pepper SEC Fanfare. The third quarter of each ball game is presented to you by the Louisiana Campaign for Tobacco-Free Living. 8.02 to go in the third quarter. Troy leads LSU 31-3. They've got it first and 10 at their 29-yard line. Get the latest scores, stats, and game highlights with ESPN MVP exclusively from Verizon Wireless, the official wireless provider of the LSU Tigers, and the Louisiana Lottery is a proud sponsor of LSU Athletics. Well, let's see if the Tiger defense can uh, slow Troy down. They took the opening kickoff, went 79 yards in 10 plays. To make it 31 to 3. They have the ball now, first and 10 at the 29. Two receivers left and one right. Nolan is back there with Brown in the pistol formation. And he has got the ball and is stopped at the line of scrimmage for no gain. And it'll be second down and about 10 depending upon where they put the ball down, right about at the line of scrimmage. Three receivers come out left, that's to the near side of the field. Two receivers on the right side, and Brown is back there by himself. Gets the play from the far sidelines. Now steps back. Has the snap, throws over the middle, complete to the 35-yard line. And then down immediately, the pass is complete to Jernigan. And it'll bring up third down at about three. <laughs> third down and three from the 36-yard line for Troy. Four receiver pattern, two on both sides. Tiger defense loads up at the line of scrimmage. And Brown is in the shotgun. There's the snap. He drops the throw. Has time and does throw. And it is incomplete up around the 40-yard line. And the Tiger defense does the job. Hawkins was over defending. And again, it was in the direction of Jernigan. And so Troy will have to punt it. And the LSU offense will have another opportunity here. Yeah, Jernigan just dropped it. Uh, it would have been a first down. Fortunate for LSU that uh, he did drop it and Troy will have to punt. But, you know, the Tigers are not the ones who are stopping them still, Jim. It's a drop pass by That's Jernigan true. that uh, puts him in punting situation. Goggins standing back around the 20-yard line. Holiday back deep for LSU. And there is that driving, bouncing kick. Gets fielded by Chad Jones, and he's immediately swarmed over. 
Never does go down. Well, he finally does uh, way back at the 20-yard uh, line, but they're going to say that uh, he was tackled after um, uh, a short punt. But he, he wasn't really tackled. He was stopped. 38 yards is what they're going to give him on the punt, and LSU will have it at their 34-yard uh, line. That's, uh, that is, an, the, you know, the ugliest punt that you will ever see in college football, the way this guy does it, but it's been very effective and totally disallowed LSU any opportunity to run the football back. All right, Jared Lee back at quarterback. Receivers on both sides out of the eye formation. Play action fake and on first down. Lee will throw it, and it is caught by Brandon LaFell, and he goes out of bounds at the 46-yard line for a first down. Boy, he had it. The ball popped out. He popped it with a, with one hand, and it came back down, and he was lucky that somebody didn't take it away from him, but he held on, and that's one of the few times in this game, Doug, I can remember that LSU was thrown on first down. Yeah, I think this 17. is a good move. LSU came out, Jim, in an I formation, a power formation, ran a play-action pass with LaFell on the right side, running a deep out. LaFell Bobbled the ball. It might have been intercepted had he not carried it back in himself. But out good of, play. Out of the pistol. Here's a handoff to Charles Scott, and Scott plows down to about the 44-yard line, 46-yard line of Troy. And it'll bring up a second down and about two. Roussel and Lee made the stop for the Trojans. That's about the longest to run from the line of scrimmage uh, by Scott tonight. Except for his 16-yard game, the first carry, I think. Yeah, Scott that was it. Uh, is now the 12th LSU running back to go over 1,000 yards in the season. He has 1,017 yards. Congratulations to him. Shotgun formation, second down and two. Lead to throw, and he does. It's caught by Dixon. First down at the 38-yard line. That is LSU's fourth first down of the ball game. They only had two at the half. And so the Tigers are moving the chains a little bit. XM is the best place to hear every LSU Tigers football game, plus basketball and baseball play-by-play -play of every SEC team. Visit xmradio.com slash SEC to learn more. 5.07 to play in the third quarter. Pistol formation, two receivers right and one left. Scott is back there with Lee, 31 to 3. LSU trails. Pass complete to LaFell on the near side. At the 35, he's knocked hard out of bounds at about the 33 yard line. Nice gain on first down will bring up second down in about five. Williams and Gales combined to make the stop. Tigers are wearing it and using it every week. The best equipment. Equipment that maximizes their potential. Maximize your company's potential with the best compact construction equipment from Louisiana Machinery and Louisiana Rents. Log on to LouisianaMachinery.com today. Scott and Lee in a shotgun. Two receivers left and one right. Second down, actually, and three. There's the snap. Lee drops back to throw. Throws it deep towards the end zone to Tolliver, and he can't get it. Just out of his reach. Tiger fans wanted maybe a little bit of interference there, but didn't get it. And it was just a little bit too strong and out of the reach of Tolliver, and it'll be third down. He was covered by Ford, but the ball was not uh, was just overthrown. Yeah, not by much, just no, by just, a foot or just so. Just by a foot or so. And, but and actually, Tolliver was bumped a little bit. It slowed him down because the pass was thrown about where you would want for it to be thrown had Tolliver maintained his momentum on the route. He just got bumped off of it uh, in the last second. Lone receiver on the left side on third down and three out of the eye formation. Lee is under center. Boy, do they ever load up the box and they give it straight away to John Quinn Johnson and he powers ahead and I think may have the first down. And they, he does have it. That's the first carry of the night for the fullback Johnson. He was weighed down by Gales and uh, Lang. But LSU has another first down at the 27. Problem is they're running out of time. 4.28 to play in the third quarter, and it's 31-3. to three. Troy leads. Three receivers on the left side. Shotgun formation. Lee, short drop to throw, does throw, and it's incomplete. He had a man wide open and missed him at the 20. That was Tolliver. Yeah, Tolliver. You, you, you just wonder as you, as you look at this, Doug. It's, it's hard not to wonder if it's just miscommunication between the receiver and the quarterback why so many of these passes that Lee throws. No, that was not miscommunication. You, you know, Tolliver ran down, went into, into the open spot in the zone. 
the, Lee threw the ball to the inside of the open spot, right where the linebacker was coming from, and Tolliver went after it, got hit in the face by the linebacker. Now he drops back to throw again, does Lee, and he throws it towards the end zone. Got a man there, and he missed him. Holy cow, Bird was open by a step and a half, and Lee overthrew him in the end zone. Jim, you know, Bird could have accelerated a little bit and reached. He can catch that pass. I mean, I think this is a nicely thrown ball. He put enough air up underneath it where Demetrius Bird could have turned the Jets on to go get it. He had about a two-yard separation behind the back and uh, just didn't go get it. Looked like he kind of short-armed it. I don't know. I you know, I think that pass is thrown well enough to make the completion. It's third down and ten. Three receivers on the left. Shotgun formation. Lee drops the throw again. And he does. And it's caught by LaFell at the 20, at the 15. He's out of bounds at the 11-yard line on the far side of the field. 16 yards on the play. Calvin, the cornerback, forced him out. And the Tigers are in the red zone, I believe, for the first time tonight. And that's the Capital One Red Zone, the official bank of LSU Athletics. And that's a nice pass by... Sure is. The, the maddening thing is that Lee demonstrates the ability to throw about every pass that there is. But he also has the ability to throw bad passes on about any pattern that there is. Lone receiver on the left side out of the eye formation. Man in motion, Lee under center. Play action fake, back to throw. He does, and is caught near side by Scott, and he's upended at about the seven-yard line. Oh, Jim, I'll tell you, Richard Dixon was so open in the end zone. His defender, Dixon made an inside move. His defender went with it, and when Dixon cut to the outside, the defender fell down. Dixon was in the end zone by himself, and he should have been the primary receiver well, on the play. But Lee never looked at him. He, he, he looked at Charles Scott the whole time and threw the football to him. You're right. And it is second down and six for LSU at the seven-yard line. Coming up on the three-minute mark to go in the third quarter. I formation, Lee under center. Hands the ball off to Scott. Scott's to the five and pushing people down to the four. And it's going to bring up third down and about two for a uh, first down, four for a touchdown. 2.43 and tick. Martin, the free safety, made the stop for... Troy, the ball is at the three-yard line. Third down, two for a uh, first down, three for a touchdown. This is the deepest penetration that LSU has made all night long. High formation, there's nobody split out, and Troy has got nine in the box. Hand off to Scott, he didn't get it. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. It is really difficult, as Doug has said all night long, when you allow the other team to know you're going to run the ball, and they put nine men in the box. You, you don't have enough people to block them. You just don't. And so now it is fourth down and two, and the Tigers have to go for it. And Jordan Jefferson coming in to run the goal line fourth down play. And this well, is probably a good choice. He's a better runner than Jared Lee. The option is option. a great goal line play. Yep. And that's what they will run. I don't think there's any question about it. Jefferson will go under center. And he runs to the near side, tucks it under his arm, and he is in for the score. And so is the bootleg, a good goal line play. And that's what he ran out of the I formation. He made the fake to the left, rolled back to the right. And this is great to see. Jared Lee came over down to the goal line and congratulated Jordan Jefferson. It's good to see those two guys yes, who are both interested in what's best for the team. And this, what a lift this can be. 31 to 10 it will be after the extra point. Third um Three yards on the run and the very first touchdown of hopefully many for the freshman Jefferson. Cole David will try to tack on the extra point, and he does just that. And so with a minute 26 left to play in the third quarter, LSU puts their first touchdown on the board. It's Troy 31, LSU 10, on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Today we salute you, Mr. Unathletic Sports Talk Radio Guy. 
You know everything there is to know about the world of sports, except how to play them. No coordination. You talk sports for eight hours a day, which is seven hours and 45 minutes more than anyone listens. Is anybody out there? So crack open a nice cold Bud Light, Mr. Unathletic Supporter. Mr. Unathletic Sports Talk Radio. Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Where do people go when they need a tough tractor that will get the big jobs done? Or where do they go when they need world-class service and expert support? They're Louisiana John Deere dealer, of course. Stop by and check out the latest models like the 3000 E-Series or the Camo Gator. So head to your local John Deere dealer and let them show you that nothing runs like a deer. Now's the time to buy, so visit your local John Deere dealer today. Experience all that John Deere has to offer at H&W Equipment in Bucky and New Roads. The third quarter of each ball game is presented to you by the Louisiana Campaign for Tobacco-Free Living. Well, here is the AT&T scoring drive. Your world delivered. Tigers win 66 yards in 13 plays. Used 458 on the clock. Jefferson ran it in from three yards out. The point after by Cole David means that Allstate will donate to the university's general scholarship fund. It is 31 to 10. Troy with uh, a minute 26 left in the third quarter. And Cole David now has made the most point after touchdowns in SEC history. That's 189, and he passed Jeff Hall, who uh, kicked at Tennessee from 1995 to 1998. Congratulations to that young man. What a career he has had here. And, Jim, now the challenge comes for the LSU's defense <clears throat> after the offense has driven the ball to score, and now the defense has to come up with a quick stop. And ideally what they'd like to do, of course, is to come up with a, guess what, pick six. But that that makes this a ball game, a 31-17 to 17 game if you do that quickly. And uh, not much hope of that, but it might happen. Jasper kicks it. Kicks it deeply. It's taken at the 7. Back to the 10, to the 15, and to the 20. He breaks it to the outside and is still going out of bounds. He got it all the way up to the 41-yard line. That is Calvin on the return, and that is not what LSU wanted to see there. Let's go down to Jordy. Earl Lane, defensive line coach, made it a, a point to talk to every defensive player and say, tackle first and then go for the strip. So they're going to try and do whatever they can to create some type of turnover, but you don't want to give them great field no, position right. like that. Nope. Napa Auto Parts wants you to get the most out of every gallon of gas you put in your vehicles, and the parts pros at Napa have plenty of gas-saving tips, so go to Napa today and get the good stuff. Three receivers right, two receivers left. Brown back there by himself. There's a snap. He looks to the far side, keeps it, and runs it himself, and is stopped for after about a yard gain, and that is all by Charles Alexander. John Deere is proud to introduce the latest model to the family, the all-new 3000 E-Series. Dependable as always, but more affordable than ever. Stop by your trusted Louisiana John Deere dealer. For more information, remember nothing runs like a deer. 57 seconds left in the third. 31 to 10, Troy leads LSU. Four receiver pattern. Brown in the shotgun with Harris. There's the snap. Drops the throw, has plenty of time, does throw, it is incomplete. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Jernigan, he was messed with by Danny McRae, who uh, knocked him off balance a little bit, and uh, Jernigan kind of juggled the ball but couldn't pull it in, and it brings up third down. It's that crossing pattern that they have run all night long. It's been successful most of the time. That time, Brown threw it a little behind Jernigan. Danny McRae was close enough that... He got his hand on it after it bounced off of Jernigan and, and knocked it away. 9 of 14 on third down conversion attempts is Troy, and it is third down and nine with 38 seconds left to play. In the third quarter, Brown rolls to the left side and throws, and he throws it out of bounds on the far Jimbo. side. Line. Good pressure on him that time. It was in the direction of Williams, and so the Tigers are going to get the ball back. Let's go to Jordy. It's the one thing that is helping LSU in their favor going against a spread offense. Troy can't run the football, so they got to throw it, and incompletions is the biggest help to LSU because the clock is the enemy. Yeah, well, that's right. Incompletions, but the problem is he's completed a whole lot of them for, for a lot of yards. Not this time. Here is uh, Goggins, who has punted four times, averaging 40 and a half. Trendon Holiday standing at the 23. But he uh, 
he kicks that running it's partially blocked and bounces but it is fielded by holiday and he's looking for some place to run and the official cut him off and he goes down at the 14 yard line now holiday had to run around an official <clears throat> before he could have a chance to cut it upfield and he is tackled back at the 14 yard line that's too bad well, that happened, you know, in the South Carolina game going the other way uh, where the umpire got in the way, and this time looked like Holiday had to, to go back a little bit. Not a smart decision nope. that he made by going to the left anyway. Cost himself some yards, 18 seconds remaining in the third quarter. LSU will start this drive at their 14-yard line. But, you know, they they have their work cut out for them, but they know what they have to do. And that is to get this one down there pretty quickly. High formation. Jared Lee hands the ball off to Charles Scott. And Scott uh, is uh, upended at the 20 uh, after a gain on the play of about uh, six. And that's going to be it for the third quarter. We will go to the fourth. And LSU has a mountain to climb. And after three, the score is Troy 31, LSU 10. We'll be back with the fourth after this. The LSU Sports Radio Network. I'm Feature. And I'm Benefit. And we're here to tell you about the new Ford Flex's style point number 43. Easy fuel, capless fueling. Which, since there's no gas cap, they... Honestly, Benefit, the name of the feature is self-descriptive. Looks like you're not needed here. <laughs> so you're not going to mention style point number 68? The EPA estimated 24 MPG highway? No. Because, you know, people really like saving money on gas. Why does it always come back to you? Test drive the all-new 2009 Ford Flex at your local Southern Quality Ford dealer. Wouldn't it be nice to get rewarded just for doing what you normally do anyway? Well, that's what happens when you sign up for free checking with rewards from Capital One Bank. It's a free checking account that rewards you for everyday banking. Just swipe your debit card, write a check, or pay bills online and earn rewards like cash, travel, or merchandise. New Capital One Rewards Checking. Visit your local branch or CapitalOneBank.com slash rewards for terms and conditions. What's in your wallet? $50 minimum opening deposit required. Bank rules and regulations apply. Limit one consumer rewards checking account per customer. Branch products and services offered by Capital One and a member of KIC. I'm Feature. And I'm Benefit. And we're here to tell you about the new Ford Flex's style point number 43. Easy fuel, capless fueling. Which, since there's no gas cap, they... Honestly, Benefit, the name of the feature is self-descriptive. Looks like you're not needed here. <laughs> so you're not going to mention style point number 68? The EPA estimated 24 MPG highway? No. Because, you know, people really like saving money on gas. Why does it always come back to you? Test drive the all-new 2009 Ford Flex at your local Southern Quality Ford dealer. Thirty-one to ten, Troy leads LSU. Tigers have it second and four as we start the uh, fourth quarter. We'll give you some stats uh, here in just a minute. We'll tell you that the fourth quarter is presented to you by the Louisiana Manufactured Housing Association. Second and four, Lee will go under center. I formation, Scott is the running back. Receivers on both sides. Lee waiting for the snap. Drops back to throw and does throw, and it is caught for a first down out of bounds. That's Bird up around the 27-yard line, knocked out of bounds immediately. Well, that Tiger fan on your holiday gift list, give an LSU and Crystal hot sauce holiday gift basket. Choose from a vast collection of LSU and Crystal branded merchandise to create a unique gift basket. Shop online at crystalhotsauce.com or shop by phone by calling 504-483-1430. LSU Tigers and Crystal Hot Sauce, Louisiana's number one team. Shotgun formation, two receivers right and one left. Lee drops and throws way downfield in the direction of and caught by Tolliver at the 39-yard line of Troy. Tolliver turned around and came back and got it. An all-streak pattern where the two outside receivers, Bird and Tolliver, just ran streak patterns. And what Jared Lee did was laid the ball up on the back shoulder. Very good throw, good decision. It allows Tolliver, the only one who could see the ball, to stop and turn back and make the reception. First down at the 38-yard line of Troy. 33 yards on the play. Two receivers left and one right. LSU going without a huddle. Scott in the pistol formation with Lee. Pass near side complete to LaFell. And LaFell goes out of bounds at the 33-and-a-half yard line. Run out of bounds by Moore. Nice gain on the play. Here are the uh, third-quarter stats. 
Troy, 18 first downs to 8 for LSU. Tigers have run it for 69 yards. Troy, 52. LSU has passed it for 83. 290 for Troy. Total yards, 342 for Troy. 152 for LSU going into the fourth quarter. In the second half, LSU had 89 yards. That's in the third quarter. 89 yards and Troy, 87. Receivers on both sides. Second down and five. Lee play action fake. Back to throw. He's got LaFell open and he's got it. Touchdown! Right on the money, he caught the ball at the three-yard line. Another 33-yard play. How about that? Deep post pattern. Brandon LaFell split out wide right. Got inside the cornerback. Created a giant, giant separation gap. And Jared Lee laid the ball just in the right place. He let LaFell adjust to it. It was on a play-action look uh, out of the eye. Nice throw for the score. LSU climbs within 31 and 17. Point after by Cole David is up and good. 14 minutes to go. Now it is Troy 31, LSU 17 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. The Southeastern Conference is committed to the welfare of all its student athletes. Last year, the SEC distributed more than $2.4 million from the NCAA Special Assistance Fund and the NCAA Student Athlete Opportunity Fund. These programs exist to provide direct financial benefit to student athletes competing in all 20 SEC sponsored sports. The Southeastern Conference, equipping tomorrow's leaders today. LSU is at a pivotal moment in history. The flagship agenda is the blueprint for moving LSU to greater prominence as one of the top public universities in the nation. To reach these goals, LSU needs strong financial resources. The Forever LSU campaign is raising support on an unprecedented level between now and 2010. Public funds make LSU a good university. Private funds will make it a great university. To find out more, visit foreverlsu.org. The fourth quarter of the game is presented to you by the Louisiana Manufactured Housing Association. Now the Tigers have scored a couple of touchdowns in a short order here late in the ball game, and it is uh, 31 to 17. The Tigers trail now, but 14 minutes to go in the game. Here is the AT&T scoring drive. Your world delivered. Tigers win 86 yards on five plays. They had two 33-yard strikes in that one, including the 33-yard touchdown to LaFell who has nine catches for 95 yards in this game. That is a career high. Nine catches in the game. So the Tigers will kick it off and try to get the ball back in a hurry. Let's go to Jordy. You know, cold pressure bursts the pipe. So does pressure right now. you got to believe that uh, Troy is starting to wonder a little bit. A good hit here may cause a little turnover. You well, never know. You, just, you never know. You never know. 14 minutes is a lot of time. No question about that. Jasper to kick it away. Calvin and Greer back deep for Troy. And he advances and he hits it. Hangs it up high towards the far side. Taking it about the 13 back to the 15 to the 20. And weaving his way. He spins and he's broken it to the 35 down the far sidelines. He's all the way back to the LSU 49-yard line. Holy cow. That's Calvin on the return, the very last thing that LSU wanted to see happen. And they were not supposed to have a very good return game, but I tell you, Calvin is as good a returner as we've seen. He's made a couple of very nice returns uh, on, on kicks here in this half. That one he made really all by himself yeah. with a couple of spin moves. I tell you, LSU's uh, special teams has been have been very good this year. Doug with Troy has returned it well against him. Four receiver pattern. Brown and Harris in the shotgun. There is a snap. He drops to throw. He does throw, and it is intercepted. Oh, my word. It should have been intercepted. Intercepted and returned, and returned for, a, for a touchdown by Hawkins. It was thrown short. And Hawkins stepped in front of the receiver, looked from up here as if he had the ball right in his, well, it was a little bit low. Yeah, must have gotten tipped. It, it was lower. Low. Yeah, I yeah, don't think it, he had a good replay, chance. Maybe he didn't have as good a shot as we originally thought. Second down and ten. Three receivers right and one left. Out of the shotgun, Brown. 
Hands the ball to Harris, who turns it up down the far sidelines, and he has got the first down or is right at it. It's going to be third down and less than a yard as, again, LSU so concerned about the pass as they really need to be. They just let Harris run right by them, and it is third down and less than a yard now at the inside the LSU 40-yard line. Shotgun formation, three receivers left, toss out to Harris, and he turns a corner, and he did not get, he did not get it. He's run out of bounds by Jacob Cotrera on the far side of the field. That's an outstanding tackle by Cotrera because Harris took the short side pitch, and he headed to the sideline, wanted to cut up the field. Cotrera got to the outside and drove him backwards, made contact with him behind the line of scrimmage, drove him backwards. I think they gave him more much more than he actually got, but uh, he lost some yards, made it fourth down and about a yard and a half to go. And it looks like Troy is going to go for it. They've got four, they got four receivers over on the left side, one on the right. Brown back there by himself, looks to throw, he is hit as he is thrown, and it is incomplete at the 40, and LSU gets it. And Cotrera again is the one who made contact with Brown. Troy had four receivers stacked up all in one place on the left side of the formation. The snap was out of the shotgun, and it came to Brown. He looked over there. He double clutched, and as he threw it the second time, he got hit by Cotrera. The ball was dropped because of the lateness of the throw. Well, wait a minute. Where, look where they're putting the ball. They put the ball at the 30. Wasn't the line of scrimmage at about the 38? It was at the 40. That's where it was. Was it at the yeah. 40? Uh -huh. Okay. All right. That's where LSU's got it. First and 10 at their 40. Three receivers left and one right. Lee is in there in the shotgun with Scott. There's a snap. Pass near side complete to, to Tolliver. And he's up to about the 47 before the stop is made. <clears throat> Got a good block by Jared Lee to help him there. Lee for Troy and Williams in on the stop. Gain of about eight on the play, second down and two. Two receivers right and one left. Shotgun formation, Lee and Scott. There's a snap. Lee drops, looks, and throws. Caught by Dixon, first down at the Troy 45-yard line. And there may have been a face mask, as I believe a flag came out after the tackle was made, or as the tackle was made. See the tackle, I believe it was uh, Lee, the middle linebacker. Personal foul, face mask. Face mask, that'll give LSU 15 more. That's a good break for LSU. Yes, it is. Yeah, I tell you, Jared Lee, to me, is <laughs> such a mystery. I have never seen a person who can look so good Sometimes and so bad sometimes, but he has looked terrific. Great. He has looked just terrific, terrific the last couple of series. He certainly has. He's thrown some great passes, uh, and the team's starting to rally around him now. I First hope he and ten, LSU at the 30. Two receivers right, one left. Pistol formation with uh, Scott back there with Lee. Now Scott sets up in the shotgun. There's the snap. Lee throws it across the way. Complete to LaFell. Down the far sidelines. He's out of bounds. Let's see where. At about the 24-yard uh, line. A quick th throw and a quick gainer. Ford was over to run him out of bounds. Co-op Bookstore, the gear you need and the colors you bleed for all your Tiger gifts and LSU apparel. Shop Co-op Bookstore located in the shadows of Tiger Stadium at 3960 Burbank Drive in Baton Rouge. Or the web at coopbookstore.com. Lee back to throw and does throw. It's caught by LaFell at the 10. He's down at the 9-yard line. It'll be first and goal to go for LSU. My goodness, Lee here in the second half is now 15 of 20 for over 170 yards and a touchdown. And LaFell is not getting up, and that is not a good sign for LSU. LaFell either twisted his knee or his ankle after he made the catch. He tried to make a cut, and as it looked like it buckled on him as he went down. Nice inside post pattern, well thrown once again. It sure was. Uh, by Jarrett Lee that time, LaFell made the reception tried to turn it up and he tried to make a cut to get inside one of the defenders and it looked like his leg buckled i don't know if it was ankle or knee let me see if we can get a, a look at it what they're looking at 
they're going to take a, a timeout here. So um, I guess we'll take it. 11.44 to go in the game. LSU 30 trails 31 to 17 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Many universities claim to have exciting school spirit, while others say they offer great academics. Some universities say they attract students from around the world and claim to have top scholars. A few universities have rich culture and unique beauty. But there is one university that has all this and more. Louisiana State University. LSU is the one. Kentucky tied in Jacob Tammy was named one of eight football bowl subdivision scholar athletes by the National Football Foundation in 2007. Florida quarterback Chris Lee was also named in 2006. The SEC has had a recipient of this honor each in the last six years, giving the conference 12 honorees during that span. The Southeastern Conference equipping tomorrow's leaders today. The fourth quarter of the game is presented to you by the Louisiana Manufactured Housing Association. LSU Athletics would like to thank tonight's game sponsor, Capital One Bank. Capital One Bank, the official bank of LSU Athletics. You get GPS navigation, traffic alerts, detour options, and color maps with VZ Navigator only from Verizon Wireless, America's most reliable wireless network and official wireless provider of the LSU Tigers. LaFell came out of the ball game after it with 11 receptions for 116 yards and a touchdown tonight. And in the second half, Jared Lee is 15 of 20 for 183 yards. Is that amazing or what? He's been spectacular this he, half. He has been absolutely spectacular. There's no question about it. Tigers are in the Capital One red zone. First and goal to go just inside the 10-yard line. I formation, two receivers on the left side. Lee under center, hands the ball off to Scott. Scott's at the five. He's down to the two-yard line. And, Jim, we've got to say for all the LaFell fans out there that he did come running off under his own power. Yeah, so, that was here's that he's going to be okay. Good to see. 11-14 to play in the game. LSU trails 31-17, to but they are second and goal at the Troy two-yard line. Maybe the three. Now Troy loads everybody up in the box. LSU doesn't have anybody split out. Eye formation. Dixon goes in motion. Lee under center. Hands it off to Scott. And Scott is a hit and bounces off and is at the good touchdown. Great second effort by Charles Scott. They had him stop. He bounced off and piled into the end zone. Tremendous effort that time. Pretty good blocking up front because Troy knew what was coming. The handoff went to Scott right at about the left guard. He hit the hole, bounced outside. He was met in the hole, actually, with a good tackle by Boris Lee, but Lee couldn't wrap him up as Scott bounced to the outside. Hang on. And they're reviewing the play to see if Scott's knee touched the ground before the ball crossed the plane of the end zone. It might have, might have. but he was right there. I tell you, it was a great effort by Charles Scott. No question about it. Find out all you need to know about the best, most affordable housing available today from the authority and factory built homes, the Louisiana Manufactured Housing Association. Visit LMHA.com to learn how you can afford your dream home. Let's go to Jordy. Pass to Brandon LaFell when he was down on the ground. After he made the catch and landed, got hit in a certain way, and the docs are telling me a slight hyperextension. But he's good to go. He'll be back. No good. problem. All right. You betcha. He's, uh, he's got a hot hand right now, as does the LSU offense that has just come to life here in the... Uh, Late stages of the third quarter and so far here in the fourth. Part of that could be that the Tigers might be just wearing them down a little bit, Doug. No, no, no. This, Jim, this is LSU decided to wake up, and I don't. Largely, it is Jared Lee. Jared Lee be been something. has become a leader this half, much more than any other period of time the entire season. I mean, he's had little streaks before, but he has become a leader this half. You never know from watching him, though, whether that's going to last much longer. I mean, it'd be terrific if that 
continues throughout the remainder of his career. No question. Because it will have been a big mountain that he has climbed to the top of. It's been a, a tough, tough ride for him. And, you know, the toughest was tonight when he threw that, that pick for the touchdown. But he's played just great here which, in the second uh, yeah, half. Yeah, which if the Tigers uh, do get it in the end zone, if this touchdown does stand, or if they do get it in the end zone, that's the difference in the score right now. And LSU's got plenty of time. After review, video evidence shows that the ball carrier's knee was down with the ball short of the goal line. It will be third and goal. Third down and goal. All right, third down and goal. But Let's it's see gotta, where they put it. Now. Well, they got to put it at the goal line. It's got to be right close. Yeah, the front nose of the football is almost touching the goal line. So third down and less than a yard to go. Now I want to know what video evidence they looked at. Yeah, because well, we didn't see any replays up here. This game is, uh, you know, not on the network television, so we don't get a lot of replays. The same power play, Lee under center, hands it to Quinn Johnson, and he's easily in. Well, he gave it to the big guy, and that is his second touchdown of the year. And that's become an effective ploy down on the goal line where everybody is looking for Charles Scott to get it. Quinn Johnson just takes the handoff. People don't like to be in his way because he knocks them on their back. And so everybody avoids him, and he took the ball, walked into the end zone, and LSU pulls within 31-23 with extra point to come. Called David will try to make it a seven-point game. It's not a good snap. The hold is down, and David got it through there anyhow. That was a good job because the snap was not was rolled back there, and Alfred got it down, and Colt David knocked it through. And so hang on now. 10-33 still left in this game. It's now Troy 31, LSU 24 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Well, management told me they weren't paying me for pep talks, so I'm going to stop now. You know that place between saving money and sacrificing quality? We are so there. What's the point of saving money if you get lousy results, especially when it comes to car insurance? State Farm can give you the right amount of coverage, plus with discounts up to 40%. You'll like how much you can save. State Farm is there. Discounts may vary 5 to 40%. State to state. Yeah! I'm getting so many ideas from the AT&T Real Yellow Pages for the Real Challenge sweepstakes. First, I'll get a total page 423. And then, oh, a little page 275. Oh, just the tips. My friend Jackie thinks she'll win, but could you see her with a page 196? I don't think so. Get your chance to win $50,000 in the AT&T Real Challenge sweepstakes at therealsweepstakes.com. Jackie says she's so page 227, but she's really a cheap little page 514. Enter today at therealsweepstakes.com. No purchase necessary. Open to legal residents of Louisiana who are 18 and older as of June 9, 2008. Ends December 16, 2008. For official rules, visit therealsweepstakes.com. The fourth quarter of the game is presented to you by the Louisiana Manufactured Housing Association. Here's the AT&T scoring drive. Your world delivered. The Tigers win 60 yards in seven plays. Use 221. LSU has scored three touchdowns in the last five minutes and 33 seconds. Let's see if there is, there's 10-33 left. So if they do that again, uh, they might win this ball game. <laughs> Didn't oh I tell you that? This is just, it's a great opportunity. It is a great taking opportunity. taking advantage of. A great opportunity. After being down by three touchdowns going into the fourth quarter. Jasper will kick it away. Calvin and Greer back deep to receive. They had a great return a moment ago, but LSU's defense did the job. And the Tiger offense also did the job. It was... Um, 14-3, Troy at the end of the first quarter. 24-3, Troy at the half. 31-10, Troy going into the fourth quarter. And it's 31-24 right now, Troy. And those folks that left early uh, missing some excitement here tonight. Because the Tigers have uh, reached down deep inside and have turned this back into a ball game. Jasper getting ready to advance. And he does, and he hits that one pretty good. Back to the 5. Taken to the 10, to the 15. Oh, and he is level at the 16-yard line. That is great. 
defense that time, and I believe that it was Daniel Graff, number 33, so. who led the charge down to get him, and this LSU football team is fired up right now. They have come to life, uh, led by Jared Lee, and everybody else is following suit, Jim. And yep. Just it, it's great to watch it because you started wondering as you watched the first half unfold, who are the guys wearing those purple and gold uniform? Not the LSU Tigers, and they've come to play here the second half. Three receivers left and one right. Shotgun formation. Brown and Harris back there. Harris comes in motion and flanks out on the near side. Brown waiting on the snap. There it is. In the pocket he throws. Incomplete at the 25-yard line. That was Jernigan. Looked like it could have been caught. I don't know if the Tiger defender got a hand on it or not, but it's a little bit cold down there, and fingers are getting a little numb at this stage yeah, of the game, too. Not cold for those guys. Jernigan just coming across the middle. Hit him in the hand. It hit him in the hand. I, you know, he's had a couple of those bounced away. He's, he's a lot better receiver than what we've been yeah, seeing he, of him this right. half. He started off the game outstanding. Four receiver pattern. Brown back there by himself on second and ten from the 18-yard line. There's a snap. Just a three-man rush. The throw across the way complete. And then uh, stop at the 22-yard line. Now the Tigers only rushing three, Doug. So they're making sure that they got those receivers covered. Third down now. And a gain on the play of about... Four makes it third down and six. Huge play right here. I mean, huge play. Well, they figured they weren't getting to the quarterback anyway, so why worry about it? Five receiver pattern. Three to the right, two to the left. Brown looks to the far sidelines for the play. Tiger fans, ones that are left, really into it now. Brown has it, drops the throw. Being chased, he throws it. And it is intercepted. It is intercepted by Jones. 20, 15. He's down at the 14-yard line. Great pressure on Brown. And Jones intercepts it. And LSU has it first and 10 at the 14-yard line. And they feed off of each other. LSU's offense has been producing here in the second half. And it leads to it. In the, uh, in the nature of the defense, Raheem Alim with big pressure placed on the quarterback and his brother, Chad Jones, makes the interception and brought it down to the 13-yard line. First down, LSU, 931 remaining in the game. Troy leads 31-24. to They were leading 31-3 to after their opening drive here to start the second half. Since that time, it's been all LSU Tigers. Shotgun formation, three receivers right side. Lee drops the throw, pump fake, rolls to the far side, and wisely he throws it away. Smart move. Very, very smart move there. And he started to brings, try to force one over the middle, and he didn't do it. And it brings a round of applause from the fans. Yes. He, whiffed, he held back on the throw in the middle, and then he rolled to the right, had no open receivers, threw the ball out of bounds over the sideline. That's right. And it'll be second and ten in the Capital One red zone at the 14-yard line, and Jordan Jefferson checks into the ballgame for LSU. Three receivers on the left side, one on the near side. Jefferson in the shotgun with Scott. Waiting on the snap. He drops. He will carry it himself. 15-10, and that's it. That was a quarterback delay, and he has stopped at the 10 and a huge third down play coming for LSU right now. Let's pause. 10 seconds for station identification on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Third down and seven, Jared Lee is uh, back in the game now and a huge play, two receivers right and one left. Scott is back there as Lee sets up in the shotgun and will throw it. It is caught. This is Tolliver still on his feet. He's going to be short of the first down, though, as they end up pushing him all the way back to the 15, but his forward progress is going to get him down to about the uh, nine-yard line. Yeah, actually, it should be a lot closer than that. I think he got hit and knocked back and was like a pinball being knocked back continually from the time after well, he caught the ball around the, the six or so. Boy, how huge is this now? I mean, that, that, that was a completed pass for almost nothing. 
And they're going to have Colt David try for the field goal with 8.07 still left to go. But boy, did LSU miss a great opportunity here to have a chance to tie this game. David will try to tack on three. There's a snap. There's a kick. And it's good. So now with 7.51 to go in the game, it's Troy 31, LSU 27. Well, the bottom line is this. For LSU to win this game, they had to score twice. And there's one of them right there. So now if they can stop Troy, get the ball back, touchdown could win this thing. And if they stop Troy, they will get the ball back. Obviously, there's plenty of time left in this game. I'm LSU and Troy, it. both with three timeouts. Troy has pressure on them now. Because a touchdown by LSU puts Let's take them the break. Seven behind. 7.51 to go. It's Troy 31, LSU 27, and the LSU Sports Radio Network. You guys ready for the game? All right. Well, management told me they weren't paying me for pep talk, so I'm going to stop now. You know that place between saving money and sacrificing quality? We are so there. What's the point of saving money if you get lousy results, especially when it comes to car insurance? State Farm can give you the right amount of coverage, plus a discount of the 40%. You like how much you can save. State Farm is there. Discounts may vary 5 to 40%. State to State. Yeah. I'm getting so many ideas from the AT&T Real Yellow Pages for the Real Challenge Sweepstakes. First, I'll get a total page 423. And then, oh, a little page 275. Oh, just the tips. My friend Jackie thinks she'll win, but could you see her with a page 196? I don't think so. Get your chance to win $50,000 in the AT&T Real Challenge Sweepstakes at therealsweepstakes.com. Jackie says she's so page 227, but she's really a cheap little page 514. Enter today at therealsweepstakes.com. No purchase necessary. Open to legal residents of Louisiana who are 18 and older as of June 9, 2008. Ends December 16, 2008. For official rules, visit therealsweepstakes.com. The fourth quarter of the game is presented to you by the Louisiana Manufactured Housing Association. Sorry about that, folks. We missed the kickoff. LSU did a great job of getting down in coverage and uh, stopped the returner, Calvin, at the 16-yard line. And so that's where Troy will put it in play. First and 10 at their 16. Here's the scoring drive. Four plays, four yards in a minute, 40 seconds. A 27-yard field goal by Cole David. And Allstate will contribute to the general scholarship fund. All right, the Tiger defense will try to get the ball back. Four receiver pattern, shotgun formation. Brown with the ball, drops, looks to throw, does throw, and it's, he throws it into the LSU bench on the near side. No receiver close. And LSU is beginning, Doug, to affect Brown, which they did not in the first half at all. They didn't, they haven't sacked him yet. But they're affecting what he's doing now, and he's getting a little bit skittish back there. LSU's done a much, much better job of dealing with those receivers uh, in the secondary. And they... Three receiver pattern on the left, two on the uh, right. He is uh, 10 out of 20 for 90 yards in the second half. Second and 10 at the 16-yard line for Troy. Brown is back there by himself. There's the snap. Here comes the Tiger Rush. He throws across the downfield, and it is almost intercepted and should have been by Coleman on the far side of the field. Oh, he'd like to have that one back as the pass was underthrown up around the 35-yard line. And Brown is getting tired. You can tell that his throws are not nearly as crisp. That time Coleman had good coverage on the flag, the corner pattern on the left. Cut across the path of the ball, had it in his hands, and dropped it. Third down and 10 for Troy at their 16-yard line, and a huge play coming here. They're still sending players in for Troy, and the last one to come in is Harris, who sets up in the backfield with Brown in the shotgun formation. There's the snap. Brown drops back at the five-yard line, steps up and throws. Incomplete! Dropped at the 30-yard line. Right in the breadbasket of Burton, and he didn't catch it. Here now. Oh, I tell you, Burton dropped a pass right, perfectly thrown. On the inside, the pass was absolutely perfect. Burton dropped that two by Jernigan that he has dropped. Uh, that's given LSU a great opportunity. That's the difference between the first half and the second half is that Troy yep. has dropped those sure completions. And, of course, LSU's played a whole lot better. 
Goggins standing at the one yard line. Holiday around midfield. Chad Jones is back there around the 35. Fourth and 10. There's the snap. And there's the punt. A uh, bouncing ball that's going to roll and take a sideways bounce and stops at midfield. 34-yard punt, but boy, is LSU in great position now. First and 10 at midfield. Tonight's game brought to you in part by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Monsanto, Yield Guard VT Triple, maximize your hybrid's full genetic potential. And John Deere is proud to introduce the latest model to the family, the all-new 3000E Series, dependable as always, but more affordable than ever. Stop by your trusted Louisiana John Deere dealer for more information. Remember, nothing runs like a deer. First and 10 LSU from midfield. Actually, I guess about their 49. Two receivers left and one right. Pistol formation. And Lee looks to the near sidelines, and LSU signals in the play. Scott is in the backfield with Jared Lee. All right, there is the snap. Hand off to Scott. Scott looking for a hole, didn't get anything. As he's down at midfield, and it'll be second down and nine. May have gotten a yard. It has been tough going for Scott tonight. Gales, among others, made the stop. For all practical purposes, second down and ten. 6.56 to go in the game. Troy 31, LSU 27. Scott has carried it 20 times tonight for just 54 yards. Two receivers right and one left. Shotgun formation lead. Drops to throw and does. It's caught by Dixon, but he's immediately hit. No, he didn't, he didn't catch it. He did not catch it. LSU's been most effective this half when they've used the Troy philosophy. Pass first and then run if you can. But LSU, when they started passing, when they let Jared Lee cut it loose, just looked like they were playing two-minute offense. That's when they climbed back well, into the game. It looked like they were having fun, and now, now they've kind of gotten back in that shell. Two receivers right and one left. Lee drops to throw, and he throws it way downfield, but nowhere near Tolliver. That, that is absolutely a total misread by either the quarterback or Tolliver, one or the other. And LSU squanders an excellent excellent opportunity to perhaps score the winning touchdown of this game. That, again, Doug, that right there, it's, it's just obvious that the quarterback and the receiver are not on the same page. Uh, they, they, they don't sure know what the other one is going to do. Right. So LSU goes three and out and has to give it up. Dow free will punt it away, and it's Calvin back deep to receive. There's a snap and a uh, ugly-looking kick. They hit a defender, and LSU falls on it. Did it hit Troy or LSU? It hit Troy. Then LSU's got it at the 20-yard line. It was a, an ugly-looking punt, took a strange bounce, and hit Calvin. It hit, and it was recovered by McCray. And LSU has a great break. They have it at the 20-yard line, first and 10. Holy cow. I feel comfortable in saying that we are watching the two ugliest punters in football in this one game tonight. I think you're the right. The Troy punter, it, his punts are so ugly, only to be outdone by Brady Dalfries, who are always ugly. But that one right there looked mighty pretty when it ended. The result was pretty. High formation, lone receiver, LaFell on the left side. Band in motion coming to the near side. Lee under center, play action fake. He's back to throw and does. It is caught far side, and that is Quinn Johnson, I believe, who's hard to bring down. He's down at the 18-yard line. Maybe the first time he's caught a pass this year. It is the first catch by Johnson, the Tiger fullback, and he caught it and is down at the 16-yard line. They have stopped the clock for some reason. I think he dropped a pass earlier in the season, and we we commented we oh, no. at the same time, not set prior to the snap. Five yards from the previous spot. I didn't see the flag. Still there, first down. There was a penalty against LSU. An illegal shift. Yeah, two receivers, he said, in motion and didn't come set for a second prior to the snap. Well, LSU making it a little harder than it has to be. Now, they have had they had first and 10 at the 50 and, and couldn't move it. They had first and 10 at the um, 20, 
And on the penalty, now it's first and 15 at the 25. Two receivers left and one right. Pistol formation. Lee, play action fake, throws it to LaFell on the screen. He's at the 20, and he goes down at the 15-yard line. Calvin made the stop for Troy at about the 16, they will say. That was nicely set up. And Tigers got about 10 on it. It'll be second and five from just behind the 15-yard line. It was nicely set up because it was a run fake to the right. And Jared Lee, although he stares his receivers down, he had to look to the right to make the run fake, then threw it back to the left. LaFell complaining that he got tackled by the face Shotgun mask. formation. Lee looks to throw and does it. Is caught at the five-yard line and pressuring himself down to the four is Tolliver. It'll be first and goal to goal for LSU. And Jared Lee with a bullet in the perfect spot. Lee, whatever it is that happened after Troy's first drive of the second half, and it must have happened at halftime to Jared Lee, he is throwing the passes accurately. He's got confidence. Whatever it is, he's got to keep that. Well, now Jefferson, Jordan Jefferson, has checked into the game, and Lee is out. First and goal for the Tigers at the uh, Troy five-yard line, and Troy is going to call a timeout. So, timeout of the ball game with 4.54 to go. LSU knocking on the door, trailing Troy 31-27 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hi, everyone. I'm Victor Howell. And I'm Paul Crane. The LSU Tigers will try to put their loss to Alabama behind them when they welcome Troy from the Sun Belt to Tiger Stadium Saturday night. And CST will be there to cover all of the action. Join us Saturday night after the game for CST tonight for the most complete coverage. We'll take you live to Tiger Stadium to hear from head coach Les Miles and take you inside the locker room for reaction from the players. Plus, we'll have the final word on the Tigers and Trojans with CST's Cox Calder. Get the most comprehensive coverage of LSU football Saturday night at 10 Central on CST tonight. I'm Feature. And I'm Benefit. And we're here to tell you about the new Ford Flex's style point number 43. Easy fuel, capless fueling. Which, since there's no gas cap, they... Honestly, Benefit. The name of the feature is self-descriptive. Looks like you're not needed here. <laughs> so you're not going to mention style point number 68? The EPA estimated 24 MPG highway? No. Because, you know, people really like saving money on gas. Why does it always come back to you? Test drive the all-new 2009 Ford Flex at your local Southern Quality Ford dealer. The fourth quarter of the game is presented to you by the Louisiana Manufactured Housing Association. First and goal for the Tigers at the five. Jefferson goes under center. Dixon in motion out of the I formation. The handoff to Scott. He plows ahead into the end zone for the score. And LSU has taken the lead for the first time in the ballgame. And this is turning the out to 14th be 14th touchdown of the year for Scott. Turning out to be a good mix. Jordan Jefferson has played some. He's also come in to run a play here and there, uh, which has worked out very well for Jared Lee, very much the way Ron Perilou played last season. And that spot play is going to give him some good experience. Cole David to try to make it a three-point Tiger Lee. This is really important right here. And the kick is up. Oh my goodness, he missed it. Are you kidding? That's the first extra point he has that missed. That is the first one he has ever missed. Ever. No, he's missed all right, that, that, he doesn't usually miss it, but he missed that one. Oh my goodness, that's, uh, that's a shock. And so, with 4.50 left to play in the game, it is LSU 33, Troy 31 on the LSU Sports Radio Network. On game day, Tiger fans from near and far gather in parking lots and under oak trees to take part in a time-honored tradition. Family, friends, and even strangers get together to share delicious food as well as each other's company. This tradition is known as tailgating, and for many of you, it starts with a trip to your neighborhood-associated food store. Associated Food Stores, where tailgating traditions begin. At LaBerge du Lac in Lake Charles, everything comes with an extra scoop of sweet, crazy goodness. It's called Lanya, and you can experience it on every visit, especially right now. Enjoy the Tiger Special, just $1.49 a night, Sunday through Thursday, now through December 23rd. Let the festival of extra awesomeness begin at LaBerge du Lac, the land of 
of Long Gallup. Visit LDLCasino.com for information. Mention offer code LSU 149 when booking. Limited time offer. Some restrictions apply. Must be 21 to enter casino. Gambling problem? Call 800 522 4700. Wow, what, what a ball game. I, I'm telling you. Uh, Colt David had made 105 straight points after, and he missed that one. And LSU leads it by two. We'll give you the drive chart in just a minute. And here's one that's going to bounce and be fielded at the 25 to the 30 and uh, swarmed over at about the 38-yard line. And Troy will start it at their 38. Now, remember, with that miss, a field goal could give Troy the lead. So the LSU defense has got to... Um, Stop them and get the ball back. That yeah. was Nolan on the return. Here's the drive chart, AT&T scoring drive. Three plays, 20 yards, a minute, 26 seconds. And LSU leads for the first time in the game. Two receivers left and one right, shotgun formation, handoff uh, up the middle is Harrison, and he pulls tacklers with him up to about the 44-yard line, a nice gain on first down. And it is Chad Jones, among others, along with um, Nealon Jones, who made the stop, but a nice gain of five brings up second and five for Troy. 4.27 to go in the game. LSU leads it 33-31. Four-receiver pattern, two on both sides. Brown waiting for the snap, and there it is. Drops to throw, plenty of time. Throws, and this time it is caught, and he breaks a tackle, and then another. Look out now. They can't get him until he's down to the 38-yard line. But there's a flag back where you would suspect holding might be called, and that's what it is. LSU does, is doing a much better job of tagging those receivers as they come across the middle knocking them off their routes. This time it took Jernigan a long time to get across the field. He was the open. The offense. That tells you it's 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay second down. Well, Tigers get a break there because the Jernigan just leveled whoever was trying to tackle him and got the ball down to the LSU 39-yard line, but instead it'll be uh, moved back to the Troy 34 or 33 and will bring up second down and 15. Troy making a lot of mistakes here in the second half. Fumbles, untimely penalties, and uh, this is a bad one for them. Four receiver pattern out of the shotgun. There's a snap. Brown drops back to throw. Plenty of time. Throws down the middle, and it is incomplete. Batted away on a fine defensive play by Belen Jones, who has played well tonight. And it's third down now and 15. The pass was intended for Cornelius Williams. Clock is stopped with 3.47 to go in the game, and LSU trailing by three touchdowns coming into the third quarter, into the fourth quarter, now leads the game 33-31. Huge play here. Five receiver pattern, three left and two right. Brown back there by himself. Tiger defense needs to make a big play here. All right, ready to go. Nope, not ready to go. And Troy calls a timeout. Well, Chad Jones was taking control out there that time, Doug. You can see him running around in the defensive backfield, talking to the Tiger players, trying to get them in the right position and uh, trying to help them out with uh, what he thought was going to be done. And Troy calls a timeout. So this is a huge, huge play. LSU, <coughs> Doug... <laughs> has scored 30 points in the last 11 minutes and 36 seconds. That, that, that's just unbelievable. Quite a comeback. Brown it? tonight for Troy is 30 for 61 for 294 yards, two touchdowns and one interception. And Jared Lee, who, let me see that halftime statue. In the first half, Jared Lee was two out of eight. Two for eight for one interception that was returned for a touchdown. He's had a great second half. We're ready to go. Three receivers right and two left. Third down and 15. Brown back there by himself. Now he raises up, looks over to the line of scrimmage, over to the sidelines, and gets the play. LSU has got five at the line of scrimmage. There's the snap. Here they come. He throws the ball downfield, and it is incomplete at the LSU 43-yard line. 
Boy, the ball was thrown well. Jernigan got his hands on it, but LSU messed him up. Well, it was uh, it was uh, Harry Coleman and another Tiger who was back there to mess with him enough to make him drop the ball. I believe that was Kirsten Pittman who happened to be back there also. Well, Harry Coleman was covering him down the field. Tremaine Johnson put pressure on the quarterback that made him get rid of the ball early. He threw it behind the receiver. Jernigan tried to adjust. LSU had too many people there. They're going to go for it. Fourth and 15. Four receiver pattern. There's a the snap. Brown drops back. Steps up in the pocket, throws it way downfield, and it is incomplete at the LSU 40-yard line. And the Tigers will take over with 3.35 to go in the game, leading 33-31. to Now, if LSU makes the first down, that's the ball game. Only one timeout remaining for Troy. LSU's got all three of theirs. They'll have the ball in great field position and certainly have the momentum in this game, a good defensive series. Uh, that time... The passes were pretty well thrown. LSU just had good coverage sure in the did. secondary, communicated very well. And at this stage of the game, you know, Troy's got to be kind of shell-shocked. They were leading 31-3. to LSU scored 30 unanswered. And they have possession with 335 remaining in the game, a 33-31 to 31 lead. Troy could only stop at one time. I formation, lone receiver, left side. And now Jared Lee is going to call timeout. Now, I don't, I don't know why he saw something that uh, LSU had all three of their time out, times out, so that's pretty smart. I mean, if there's a question in your mind, then you call a timeout sure. and you talk it over. In the fourth quarter, LSU has dominated. We, we, uh, I think he's, uh, Jordy is saying that LSU only had 10 men on the field, and Jared Lee very wisely saw that and called a timeout. But here's an interesting stat. We talked about in the first half, because we had to, what the stats bore out, how Troy was dominating the ballgame. Now listen to this. In the fourth quarter alone, remember, LSU had two first downs at the half, two in the entire first half. In the fourth quarter alone, now, LSU has seven first downs. Troy has none. LSU 154 yards. Troy 19 in the fourth quarter. That is total domination. Now we're ready to go. Long receiver near side, eye formation. Lee under center, hands it off, and Scott piles ahead, breaks the tackle, then another. Still going, still going. Ten. He's down to the five-yard line. Holy cow. What a powerful run by Charles Scott. Finally way down the strong safety Williams 29 yards on the gallop it is first and goal to go LSU at the four more than any other time this entire season this LSU team has become a team in the second half of you this bet. game you betcha more than any other this is the first time with the Jim they've missed something the entire season and whatever it is that happened after that Troy touchdown on the first series LSU has become a team. Tigers in the Capital One red zone. I formation. Nobody flanked out. Lee hands it off to Scott, and Scott is at the two and will go down at about the one. And the clock shows less than three minutes to play in this game. Well, you know, being embarrassed in the first half tonight might have had a little something to do with it. Well, and that happened. I mean, they, they got embarrassed because they embarrassed themselves. Uh, did not play hard, played with nothing, no emotion, uh, no desire, no nothing. And in the second half, <laughs> you know, they came out in the locker room, as, as Jordy said, coaches said, we got to stop them three and out. And Troy promptly took it yeah. in length of the field to score. All right, I formation, second and goal to go from about the one and a half yard line. Jared Lee will go under center. And he hands it off to Scott, and Scott is at the one. He didn't get in. It'll be third down. And goal to go at about the one-yard line. As LSU trying to just plow straight ahead. And in the meantime, the clock is down to less than two minutes. 33-31, LSU leads. Third and goal to go from the yard and a half line. Now, did you give it to Quinn Johnson on that fake? I don't know. Same formation. Everybody is lined up strong. Now, Johnson, and he's in again. He did it. He handed off 
to Quinn Johnson. He gets his second touchdown, and the Tigers have not put a lid on him. And Johnson was met a little more solidly this time than last time when he wasn't touched, but he still crossed the goal line before that contact. And so LSU extends the lead to 39-31. Colt David with what used to be an automatic point after touchdown come and he missed the last one, so it's no longer automatic. One. I am betting that he makes this one. Snap, place, kick. How about it? Right there in the middle. How about this football game? fourth quarter. It is with a minute and 40 left to play in the game. It is now LSU 40, Troy 31. And for those of you that left a long time ago and just thought you'd turn the radio back on to see what the final score is, you heard me right. LSU 40, Troy 31. The at and scoring drive, four plays, 34 a minute 55. All state will have to contribute to the general scholarship fund because Cole David made that point after. LSU has scored 37 points in the last 14 minutes and 44 seconds. That is truly amazing. LSU went into the fourth quarter trailing 31 to 10. They have scored 30 points in the fourth quarter. And the shortcoming of Troy's offense, uh, which is also its strength, is that it is a, a short pass, a lot of completions, ball control passing game, but that's not what they need right now. They need a yeah. home run passing game, and they don't they have to score twice. Here is a Jasper, and he's hit the, his best kick of the night. He's going to go back to the five-yard line, back to the 10 to the 15, and fighting hard and then being hit hard at the 29-yard line, and that's where they will they will start the series. A spoil was there to a stand-up Calvin, and so LSU's defense will go back onto the field, and there's just a minute 31 left to play in this one. This is a game that people will talk about for a long time. And caught up underneath all that was Ron Brooks. Ace Foyle grabbed the, the kick returner, pulled him down, and the entire pile fell on top of Ron Brooks, which is the last guy to get up, and he was under a lot of weight there. All right, here's the shotgun formation. Brown drops back to throw, and he does throw. It is caught, and then being knocked out of bounds at the 31-yard line, that is Harris, the fullback. And it'll bring up second down, stops the clock with 1.26 to go. Rich in history, comfort, and elegance. Come enjoy the impeccable service at the Hilton Capital Center in historic downtown Bad Rouge. Enjoy a weekend getaway or dine on the best steak and seafood dishes in Bad Rouge at the Kingfish Hilton Capital Center. Call for reservations today, 225-3 Hilton. Brown drops the throw. Does throw across the way. He's got his man, and he will go down at the 36-yard line. Pass was complete. Harris coming out of the backfield. Patrick Peterson made the stop. Good sure tackle over there by Patrick Peterson. Made sure that he stayed in bounds. Didn't that didn't give him a chance to run to the sideline. 105 with the clock running and third down in about three. Snap back to Brown out of the shotgun. He looks and fires down the middle, and his intended receiver fell down. It is incomplete. The man it was intended to is that was Davis. Down around the LSU 40, stops the clock with 54 seconds left. Last time uh, Troy came in here, Doug, you remember LSU had to score late in that game in the fourth quarter to win it. And they have come back to win it here in the fourth quarter again here tonight. This was more exciting well, than no that kid. one. Fourth down and three. Four receiver pattern, Brown the snap, drops the throw, does throw, and it is caught for the first down up at around the 42-yard line, caught by Jernigan. And it stops the clock with 48 seconds left to play. This is believed to be the biggest comeback ever for LSU. 28 points behind and believed to be the first time they've ever scored 30 points in, in a quarter period, much less the fourth quarter. First and 10, four-receiver pattern, Brown 
drops the throw, has time, throws down the middle, and it is batted away from the intended receiver. And again, it's Phelan Jones, I believe. That's who has really stepped up tonight and done a terrific job. It was intended for Williams. And uh, Jones is a red shirt freshman who is playing exceptionally well here tonight. He's done a very good job in that trail technique on the pass receiver. That's when you get behind him and you just you follow him and shadow him and you try to put yourself between him and the path of the ball so he can't see it and you can gauge where it's coming from to get your hand up. Phelan Jones has done a terrific job in that coverage here the second half. Second and ten, Brown drops the throw, does throw downfield, and he overthrows the intended receiver down around the 35-yard line. That was uh, number 21 who was down there, and that was Silboy. Third and ten, stops the clock with 36 seconds left. The LSU will be laying in wait for Ole Miss and the final home game of the year next Saturday afternoon, 2.30. And Harry Coleman with a good job on the deep coverage. Chris Hawkins did a good job on the short coverage. Good good tandem coverage on that receiver. There's a snap to Brown out of the shotgun. He drops the throw, has time, throws way downfield again, and it's incomplete again. And well defended by LSU at the Tiger 35-yard line. Remember, uh, Ole Miss uh, kind of made a statement today, too, as they beat the ULM 59 to nothing. They also are the only team to have beaten Florida this year. Pass was intended for Silvoy, and boy, the uh, Tiger defensive uh, backfield has really, really stepped it up after being picked apart early in the game. Fourth down and 10 with 31 seconds left to play. This is, will be the 70th pass of the game for Brown. He unloads it. It is incomplete at the 40-yard line. And LSU, oh, my goodness. They finally throw a late flag. Well, Chad Jones, who was trailing the receiver, but, but very closely trailing him, he had inside position, and as he trailed him across the field, I don't believe that's pass interference. He dove in front of him, knocked the ball down with his front hand, may have grabbed the receiver with his backhand, but... Yeah, I don't see how you can call that. Well, I don't either. And, and in particular, he, he threw Number the ball three on the, the defense. About That's two or three. Fifteen yards. The play was over. Previous spot. It carries another. Well, that's a play that you tell him, great play, son. Absolutely, and do that again the next time. Do it again every time. Twenty-five seconds left in the game now. First and ten for Troy at the LSU forty-three. 40 to 31, LSU leads. There's another flag being thrown. I think uh, it's going to be thrown on Troy. Substitution in front. Yep. On the offense. Five drives from the previous drive. Yep. They got 12 Three guys out on the field. And one, one, one guy was trying to get off the field. Yeah, but he's, you know, he, but he stopped. Yeah. You, <laughs> and when you, you got 12 of them, if, if they're 12 that you break the huddle with, see, he's going to. He's going to wave it off maybe now. Nope. No, he's not. Let's see. That was number four. See, they don't huddle, so you don't have 12 in the huddle. But Davis was on the field as they lined up, and uh, so it's first and 15 now. Moves the ball back to the uh, 48. Three receivers right and one left out of the shotgun. Brown takes the snap, drops back deep, rolls to the near side, and is going to be run down and hit hard in front for a loss at the 49-yard line. Run down from the far side by Tremaine Johnson. Then he had some help from Kirsten Pittman. And with 15 seconds left in the game, and LSU with the game in their back pocket, Troy's going to call a timeout. It'd be very difficult for them to score twice in 15 seconds. It would be tough. They're going to call a timeout, and LSU's going to improve to 7-3 uh, and three on the year, and Troy will drop to 6-4. and four. Boy, what a what a game of two halves. Like I honestly don't know that I've seen anything like it. Well, Jim, as we talked early in the second half, we're just waiting for LSU to pick the right time to make their move. And, and, and don't you feel good about the fact that, that it was good that Jared Lee is the guy who came out and sparked? I am. After he I am. I think that's terrific. In, in the first half and I mean, for him. another pick six and then came out and just was incredibly good here in the second half. You know, for him to have shown up after, I'm sure, the, the things that people said about him throughout the entire week, yep. 
Uh, it was just terrific. Three receivers left and one right. Shotgun formation. Brown rolling to the far side looking to throw. Sets and cocks and fires and the ball is hanging up and it is tipped and hits the ground incomplete. Down around the LSU 15 yard line with seven seconds uh, on the on the clock. Well, LSU had a, Hail Mary. Yeah, he had a bunch of guys down there. Somebody should have intercepted it. It looked like it was going to be first, but it was batted down, and that's just as good. LSU has got the game won. They lead it 40 to 31 with seven seconds left to play in the ball game. This Levi Brown is a pretty good quarterback, though. Yes, he's he accurate. He's thrown the ball about 75 times today. Most passes I've ever seen in a game. It's like going about 15 innings, isn't it? Yeah. Here's Brown again. He will throw across the way a screen pass. Breaks one tackle, and then goes down, and he went down inbounds at the 40, and that ought to do it. Well, oh, no, he got a first down, I guess. No, he didn't, no, he didn't get a first, first down. Well, why did they stop the clock? He hit the, he hit the ground, obviously, inbounds. Yeah. Have no idea why they stopped the clock with one second. The pass was complete to Burton. So it is uh, fourth down and nine. <laughs> he fumbled the ball out of bounds. That's what happened. Is that what it was? He went down he inbounds. Okay. The ball was fumbled out of bounds. So this will be the last uh, play of the game. There's been 113 passes total in this game. Why, why is it the clock running? Okay. We'll run until the snap of the ball. Now it does run, and that's it. That's it. The last second just ticked off, and this ball game is over. What a ball game. What an incredible comeback by LSU. Just uh, unbelievable. Tiger scored 30 points in the fourth quarter. I don't know if that's the Troy head coach or, or one of the coaches that's actually going after the officials. One, one of the coaches was actually trailing the official as they tried to get off the field and was saying something in a very vociferous manner. Yeah, I don't know. The, the Troy head coach was congratulating Les Miles. And, uh, so I don't know who that guy was, who it was. He, uh, he certainly was unhappy about something. Frustrated probably more than anything else. But uh, what we saw here tonight was something that may have never happened before. As, as we've been told, LSU scoring 30 points in the fourth quarter. I don't think they've ever scored 30 points in a quarter any time. And the most improbable comeback that we probably have ever seen. As the Tigers were down 31 to 10 going into the fourth quarter. And they end up winning this ball game by the score of 40 to 31. So LSU is now 7 and 3 on the year. And Troy, with two uh, Sunbelt Conference games remaining, drops to 6 and 4. So we'll take a timeout. And when we come back, the postgame show will begin here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Subway restaurants are proud supporters of the LSU Tigers 2007 National Champions. Now when you upgrade your fresh value meal, you can get an exclusive 44-ounce 2008 LSU Football Collector's Cup. Score big with this great deal. Your choice of a delicious sub, chips, and a refreshing drink in an LSU Tigers Collector's Cup. For a limited time only at participating Subway restaurants. Rush in today and tackle your hunger like a champ. Subway, play hard, eat fresh. Hey, Dan, I'm here. I'm ready to get this tailgate going. Where are you? I'm right behind you. Wow, you drove your Cat Compact Excavator to the LSU game. Sure did. I just got it from Louisiana Machinery. They're the best source for compact excavators. Oh, you love that so much. I'm surprised you didn't buy your wife one. Hey, don't be silly. She got a rental from Louisiana Rents. Woo-hoo! Go Tigers! I should have guessed. Louisiana Machinery and Louisiana Rents. Call 866-843-7440 or log on to LouisianaMachinery.com. This is Tina, live on Rock FM. I'm in the middle of holiday shoppers, letting them know about the holiday scratch-offs from the lottery. Folks, are you finding your holiday gifts? Honey, we're in a rush. What can we get for 10 bucks? The holiday scratch-offs from the lottery. Buy all four for 10 bucks. Fun to give, fun to get. Better than a red tag sale. Ah! It's the holiday scratch-offs, string of lights, tis the season, cool winnings, and $100,000 holiday. All four for 10 bucks. Must be at least 21 to purchase. 
The Hilton Capital Center and LSU have both played an integral part in Baton Rouge history and are entering into a new era together with the Hilton Capital Center serving as your favorite Tiger fan hotel. The Hilton has amenities fit for a king, concierge services, third floor garden and pool deck overlooking the Mississippi, and a full-service day spa. Their signature restaurant, the Kingfish, offers exceptional steaks and seafood in a setting and style fit for Huey P. Long himself. For reservations, call 2253-HILTON or visit HiltonCapitalCenter.com. Hilton Baton Rouge Capital Center, the perfect home away from home for LSU alumni and Tiger fans alike. Go Tigers! Kevin Ford, back at the LaBerge Dulac Casino Resort Studio Control Room, a Pinnacle Entertainment property, and welcome to the AT&T postgame show. The LSU Tigers with a big-time comeback in the second half of this game. They come from behind to beat Troy tonight, 40-31 to in Tiger Stadium. Just a heck of a comeback as LSU was down 24-3 to at the half and fell behind 31-3 to with 11-13 remaining in the third quarter of play as Troy scored first in the second half. And at that point, down 28, it didn't look good for LSU, but the Tigers came back, roared back, and won the game 40-31 to tonight in Tiger Tiger Stadium. Capital One Bank is proud to be the official bank of LSU Athletics. Stop by any Capital One Bank location in Louisiana and find out how to get your free LSU t-shirt. Hurry, offer valid while supplies last. Capital One Bank NA, member FDIC. And don't miss your chance to secure $100 season tickets for the next five seasons as part of LSU men's basketball centennial celebration. For more information, log on to LSU Sports. Dot net. All right, here's our scoreboard brought to you by CST, the home of LSU Athletics. Earlier today in the Maravich Center, the LSU basketball team got off to a great start. They beat Jackson State 79-65. Bo Spencer, career-high 21 points. Chris Johnson and Tasman Mitchell each with 17 for the Tigers. The Lady Tigers tip off their season tomorrow in the Maravich Center at 1.30 in the State Farm Tip-Off Classic against Notre Dame. Tickets available. Go out and support Van Chancellor and the Lady Tigers if you can. College football, number one, Alabama rolls over Mississippi State and Tuscaloosa, 32-7. to Number three, Florida. How good are they playing right now? They blast number 24, South Carolina, in the swamp, 56-6. to Number four, Kansas wins on the road. At, number four, Texas wins on the road at Kansas. 35-7 Longhorns. Number six, Southern Cal avenges last year's loss to Stanford. They win it 45-23. Number seven, Penn State gets back in the win column. They beat Indiana 34-7. Number eight, Utah embarrasses San Diego State 63-14. Number nine, Boise State beat Idaho 45 to 10. It was number 10, Ohio State over Illinois 30 to 20. Number 11, Oklahoma State beat Colorado 30 to 17. It was number 12, Missouri blowing out Iowa State 52 to 20. Number 13, Georgia goes to Auburn and wins 17 13 dogs. Number 16, BYU beat Air Force 38 to 24. Maryland upsets number 17, North Carolina 17 to 15. Boston College upsets number 20, Florida State, in Tallahassee, 27-17. It was number 23, Oregon State, defeating Cal, 34-21. And how about this score? Houston beats number 25, Tulsa, 70 -21. To 30. A couple of SEC games. LSU's next opponent, Ole Miss. They beat up on UL Monroe 59 to zip in Oxford. And hats off to Vanderbilt. For the first time since 1982, they are bowl eligible. They go on the road to Lexington and beat Kentucky 31 to 24. The LSU Fighting Tigers come from behind tonight. They're down 31 to 3 in the third quarter. They win it with 30 fourth quarter points. 40 to 31 is the final score. LSU over Troy. LSU would like to thank tonight's game sponsor, Capital One Bank. Capital One Bank, the official bank of LSU Athletics. We'll take a timeout and come back in and take a look at more scores brought to you by CST. Well, state games and other games of interest from around the nation. That's next as the AT&T postgame show continues on the LSU Sports Radio Network. 